Hey, guess what we just did? <laughs> Come and find out at Kind of Funny Live 3. <laughs> Buy your tickets at kindoffunny.com forward slash KFL3. Hey, you. You love the internet, right? Well, how about you make the internet? That's right. This episode of the Game Over Greggy Show is brought to you by Squarespace. Make your dreams come to life if your dreams involve the internet. And in this day and age, brother, you know they do. They let me write this ad again, by the way. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace features beautiful, award-winning design templates, an all-in-one platform, 24-7 customer support. Squarespace provides all sorts of cool things like custom domains, and it's on the internet you're on the internet right now that means we're all part of the internet this is like being told you're part of a tree and can grow an apple grow an apple today with squarespace start your free trial at squarespace.com game over greggy and enter the offer code g-o-g to get 10 percent off your first purchase squarespace grow an internet apple i made that up What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over, Greggy Show. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello. It's been a week, maybe more. How's your back? Uh, it's getting better. Yeah? It's, it's getting good. better, yeah. You getting there every day? Yeah. How long hydrating. before you're back out there rolling around with Sean Pitts in bed? Oh, probably I'm sorry, another, on the mat. Same difference. Uh, probably another week, I would imagine. Okay, cool. Yeah, right now, the thought of uh, doing anything physically strenuous yeah. uh, just throws a shutter up my spine, literally and physically sure. or, and figuratively. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing anything crazy anytime soon. Okay. Yeah. Over there, the pure one, Tim Gettys. LaCroix. LaCroix. You should just be like, LaCroix. LaCroix. When did it start? Viva LaCroix. LaCroix. Because um, it's, it's, it's on its way to take over the entire world, I've noticed. Uh, oh, it, I'm late to this party. Okay. This party, I didn't get the invite, and yeah. I just showed up eventually because okay. I heard that. Because of Gia Harris. Yeah, no. Gia brought you to the party. Gia, the party? Uh, Gia was, she was at the party already. Okay. And I was like, I'm not going to that party. I also wasn't invited to the party. Sure. Uh, but then I went down to L.A. for a meeting with Microsoft. Oh, mm, ooh la la. Yeah, because I'm a fancy, fancy motherfucker. And uh, <laughs> they had LaCroix. And they're like, well, since you're a fancy motherfucker, and this is a fancy business meeting, you want some LaCroix? It's fancy water. Like, you're like, yeah, Hell. I drink it all the time. Of course I'm fancy. Yeah. No, I was just like, let me try it. And I tried it. I'm like, uh, this is disgusting. And then just like every other drink in the world, if you drink it enough, you stop like thinking it's nasty and you just keep drinking it. Yeah, and it's not bad for you. Just makes you bloated, but nah. And joining us for the first time, Patreon supporter, Crush Your Goals podcast host, Chris Yates. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm great, man. Hanging good. in there. Chris, what's the what's the, so you supported us over on Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny to come on the show? Yes, I did. I fucked you over, booked you, and then <laughs> totally had the wrong day on my calendar. It's all right. We figured it all out. Here you are now. I'm here. Uh, you, 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 tell us about it. What's the what's the give us give us the elevator pitch. Elevator. elevator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitch. Uh, just crush your goals is just basically the idea of just doing what you love, whether it is, um, you know, if you want to be a librarian, a cook, an astronaut, whatever sure. it is that you makes happy in life. You know what I mean? You really go after it. Just do that. You know, as long as you're not, you know, hurting babies or anything else or yeah, just, you know, you know, the whole Kevin Smith Kool-Aid thing. Mm -hmm. I've been drinking that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it. How long have you been That's doing good. your podcast? Since January 2nd, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so I've been doing, fresh. yeah, about that. And then um, I've been doing it the whole time, posting and yeah. Once a week? Once a week. Uh, once. I kind of do something, you guys may be aware of it, where I uh, put it through topic by topic, oh. segment by segment, sure. because it's uh, I'm all by myself, and so it's the only way I can keep content and keep up with everybody else in sure. this, you know, this world. This YouTube world. Yeah. yeah. That's smart, king. though. I so. like that. We were talking earlier about this, and I was looking at a YouTube channel. It's very impressive looking. Thank you. It seems like you've, you've learned from, from the right people. Uh, your logo designed by Zach Silver. Yes, it is. The same guy that does our logos. Reflect Design Co. Which is great. Yeah, Reflect Design Co. Fantastic work. Yeah. And I love your thumbnails. I love the look of all of it. And yeah, you look like you've done a lot of content for only doing it the last couple months. Doing a lot of studying. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. As in watching. Yeah, that's how so. things get done, though. I talk about it all the so. time about how our stuff reflects what I learned from watching Rooster Teeth growing up. So. Well, and that was the thing too, is just seeing you guys and be like, I can do that. You know what I mean? Yep. Just exactly. like, and the whole thing literally exactly. anybody can. You know, yeah, exactly. Get on it. And so literally, with my setup is that I'm in my own room as well. It's literally just setting up, moving my bed, putting my camera up, my lights, and then that's it. And you so got if a nice I would have come over and too. done your show at your house, I would have been on your bed. I mean, we can put you on the bed. We can do a show that way if you want. 
Yeah, move the bed. Shut up, Kevin. Let me just dream about being on a bed, all right? You Trump have your own you dream bed. about you the bed. Two, beds aren't you married? Now. I got one bed. How many beds? I am married. That's right. I was gonna say he is married. <laughs> God, is that weird? Not gonna be weird. Uh, not yet. No, yeah. I don't know. It's it's still fun. It's still quaint. Yeah. To say my wife this. Yeah, right. That cool Greg was over here for a barbecue today. He was talking to me about it. And we're talking about it. He's, got, he's like, yeah. And you got someone bad at home. And now you get to call her wife. And I'm like, I do. It's cool. This is cool. You do have someone bad. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> she's, she's bad. bad. She's, she's a bad, bad motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. I'll yeah. put it out there. Yeah. Thank you very much for I'll saying that. I'll say that. Hey, yeah. thanks for Just bringing that person line. into our lives. No problem. Well, you guys brought her into mine. So, uh, that's, uh, fair, that's fair enough. Episode. That's fair enough. <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Game Over Greggy Show each and every week. Four, sometimes five. Best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can toss us a couple of bucks get the show as early or toss us more get on the show get some extras have some fun have a fun email and phone call with me when I fuck up the scheduling because I'm too overworked and have things happening. Uh, if you have no money to toss though no big deal head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where we post the entire show topic by topic day by day until it goes up as one big video and mp3 the following Friday. Chris. The floor is yours. What is your topic? My topic is creativity. I know this is a funny way of saying things because, you know, I'm copying you guys and Kevin Smith. But, um, well, yeah, that's inter that's interesting. You're a big Kevin Smith fan, right? Yes, I am. Outside, when you got here today, I was talking to you and I, it was Kevin. And I who, floored you without saying Kev I don't do games. Yeah, Kevin mentioned <laughs> something about video games. Like, oh, I don't play video games. I'm like, wait, how did you find us? I found you guys through Kevin Smith. And then so I basically found you guys and just listened to you ever since then. So basically when that came in December of like okay. a year or two ago. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, last that's week of December. That's where I found you guys. Wow. And I was just like, wow. you know what? I think I can do it. Well, I was in, step back. I was listening to Kevin Smith and be like, I can do a podcast, or at least I think I can do a podcast. Not yeah. well, mind you, but I was just like, I think I can maybe do it. And so I was just like, let's try. And so my first podcast was like Yeti Mike, me talking to two friends and yeah. just like, fuck it, let's try. And so then it was just like, okay, I'm going to recess things, re th redo things because life happens. And then, so I got that. Oh, fucking. That's what Kevin does. Yeah. He loves trying to attract everybody during the show. <laughs> just here he goes. But anyways, um, so then it's I just, just I relaunched everything and then it was just the idea of like, oh, I'm going to do with kind of funny i can say i can do that so i'm just gonna do this and nice. then kind of funny and then uh, with kevin smith and things like that okay so back coming back creativity i'm sorry my apologies no no worries to get out there i like that i like that origin story and so basically um how do you guys create personally do you guys have a schedule do you have a routine mm -hmm. do you find time to be creative between work and a personal life do you have a kind of funny mindset do you have like a personal mindset that's kind of like the general idea of it. And then okay. so you guys can take it wherever you want. Well, I but want to start with you because like you're, you're, you're here at Crush Your Goals, your podcast and all this stuff. Yes. But that's not your job, right? You have a, a full-time gig you have to go do. Yes. How do you find time then? How did, how, did, how did you go from I listen to podcasts and I think I could do that too. You know what? I'm going to work a hard day because what do you do for a job? I work with uh, special needs kids and I make sure they get to school. And uh, That's an awesome job to have. Thank you. But I mean, I imagine it's stressful. It's tiring. Bit. Yeah. yeah I would, you'd want to come home, I imagine, at some point and looking at your physique, eat a oh, three stop. three dozen buffalo wings, stop. have a beer. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find time between, I guess, lifting a bus over your head and driving a bus? And then, I mean, like, what motivates you to go be creative? Just doing it, I guess. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just finding the time for me it literally is just that and just understanding like what is it i want and how i want to do things because the way i want to do with my i guess platform or brand or whatever the hell you want to call it i mean it's mostly just me and two of my friends yeah and then they're nice enough to like humor me and so basically it's just me and so it's just the idea of like all right how do i do this how can i go that next step and it's like i want to be here but i want to be there as well so let's just might as well just do it start working on just it, start yeah. working on yeah. it and find what makes me happy and this past year for me has been finding that. And then, um, cause it, when I first launched Crusher Goals, I mean, I don't know if I wanna make it a Crusher Goals topic, but it was just that idea of, it was based on fitness. Cause that's when I first thought of it. I'm like, oh, fitness, clothing lines, Crusher Goals, that sounds awesome. And you know, most, most people would associate that. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, that went on for a year and then it just didn't happen. And then my life happened and then um, personal stuff happened. And it was just like, what can I do now? This I'm not excited about this. I'm going to expos. I'm going to things. It's just it's not working. You know what I mean? It's just, These are like fitness expos and stuff like that. Yeah, this is fitness expos and things. Just I'm trying making deals with people and just fell through. And it's just like, well, fuck. Like yeah. I'm trying my hardest to get shit done, and it's just why is this not working? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If, you're, if you're putting all your time, all your energy into said basket, why is it not working? Granted, you're not supposed to put all your energy into one basket, as they say, but. Um, so then I relaunched it and then it was just like, I want to make stories. I want to find that. And that's, mm. and I want to be a storyteller. And gotcha. so how badly do I want to tell my stories or stories about film or whatever it may be or other people's stories? Sure. 
So I think with the Crusher Goals podcast, I have when I have one on one time, it's me talking to people I find interesting or, you know, people I'm talking to as in like business people or developers or you know, not in the sense of developers as like gamers, but yeah. just like comics and things like that. Sure. sure, more sure, sure. On the film and comic side. Sure. Sure. Creators in general. Yeah. 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 And you also you're working on a script for a movie. Yeah. So, so that's that kind of is the goal when there's the other goal that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, so um, if you can see, I have a really big head, and so I try to shoot for the stars, and that's just the whole big thing going for it. And so trying not to have an ego, but it's just like, what is it do I really want to do? And it's like, I want to make a movie. That's been that's my, awesome. That's been my biggest dream, like, because growing up, I was always, like, busting to school or things like that, so I never was, like, talking to people or, yeah. or in the sense of, like, I was one of the cool kids, so I always did sports to kind of, you know, supp supplement that. But then it was just like, all right, I'm going to watch movies with my parents. And then my mom or my dad taking me to the movies on Wednesday or not Wednesdays, so on Sundays or things like that. And it was just, I want to do this. This is cool. Like, and then seeing Kevin Smith be like, that doesn't look that good. Like, Clerks, it's harsh, but, you know, it's, it's a thing of its time. You know? No, no, totally. Yeah, Kevin totally. Smith will say that, though. Yeah, right? and Kevin he Smith said, said it multiple too. times, Clerks is not a good movie. But, yeah, I mean, oh, it's, whoa. A well-made movie, I should okay. say, as far as craft is concerned. But that's it's always a fun been, movie. It's a great movie. That's just been it. always been like my true passion. It's just like I went to Long Beach State, right? And then so I did track. And then they said, "Hey, if you want to come and do track here, you can't do film. You're just you're you're what a bunch of assholes. Your credits don't line up, yeah. so you got to do something different." Okay, so I did something different. And then it's like I got a job offer to be a coach. And it's like, all right, well, this is good money, and this is like a cool experience, but this isn't filmmaking. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And then just like just figuring things out of just like hitting every single bump in the road, you know, that plan B of just been like, fuck, this isn't what I want. Sure. By the time you turn around and look down the path you've gone, you're like, I'm way off track from where I want to be. Yeah. And they say like Morgan Freeman was on hit the Nerdist one way back then. He's like, if you're doing plan, plan B, then why are you even worrying about plan A or something, something yeah, to that effect. Yeah. And it's just like, fuck, I need to get back to that. Cause that's what makes me happy. And then I just was like, fuck it. I'm going to start writing mm, and then just mm. see where it goes. And then, slowly but surely became about my life and then how I'm going to do things. Cause it's like Ricky Gervais said on the Hollywood reporter or he re years ago wrote an article and it was like, write what you know. So what do I know? My life. <laughs> simple. I mean, sure. simple as that way, but it's just like, okay, I'm going to write a story based on me and my best friend and everything we've experienced in the past three years of our lives. And then I'm going to try and just take it to that next level. So it's basically like 80% our lives and then 20% kind of just like, spinning a yarn that's awesome so. that's really cool i mean uh, it's i mean creativity that's what this is all about obviously but i mean it's yeah. awesome to see you make time for that while you're doing this youtube channel while you have a great job i mean getting off of plan b trying to switch this up and get where you want to be yeah and then for some people are probably like why does this guy have a youtube channel or this or that it's just this is something i can do in the meantime you know what i mean yeah. this is something fun i enjoy i don't expect many people to look at it sure. or see it you know i've been podcasting for like two or three years now. Yeah. And then when I first launched Crusher Goals, I had a crush cast with the Yeti thing, right? So that's been three years of shitty podcasting, you know? And like, I'm just now getting to being halfway decent. You know? Yeah. It takes a lot of work to be just this half-assed. You know? <laughs> so, Trust me, we know. Well, we're well aware of that. <laughs> well Don't worry about so, that. And so that's just that mindset of just like, I want to just keep trying because I'm... Back then, or I should say back then, back about two to three years ago, I had someone in my life say, you know, you're, you're just going to be this one thing. Mm. And you know what I mean? And then that person was a big part of my life at that time. And it was just like, you know what? Fuck you. Yeah. No. Fuck you. No, it's not. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm more than just said thing. You know what I mean? Or at least in my heart and in like my head, I feel like I am. Sure. And so it was just like, how far can I take that? Right. Or at least how far can I try to take that? That's, this was a relationship, I'm assuming? Huh? A relationship, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah no yeah. longer. <laughs> yeah, well, when you mentioned something happened, I assumed that's what it was back yeah. in the day. But no. that's what you need to do. Like that, I mean, for us in particular, I mean, for what we've done and how you went, I remember when we were getting ready to leave IGN and it was that thing of telling people about it. And I think even Kevin Smith talks about it on a podcast we did mm -hmm. with him where it was just like, well, what do your significant others think about this? You know what I mean? And it was that, if any of them would have been at the time, like, this is a dumb idea. Why yeah, are you yeah. doing this? You couldn't do this. You can't, you're nothing about them, blah, blah, blah. It would have been like yeah. that moment of either you accept that and that's who you are. You're mm -hmm. like, no, fuck off. Like, this, I can be more than this. I can do more than this. And to your point, um, shout out to my girlfriend. She is completely supportive of it. Uh, her name's Marika. What a Marika? Marika. She's five foot two and has uh, calves the size of softballs. Nice. So uh, she works out too. So <laughs> I imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> and so, either that or she's got amazing genes for calves. Yeah. yeah. And so um, she can eat whatever she wants and has amazing calves. calves. They built. But anyways, um, so yeah, but she's been super supportive of it. And I mean, she's been there since day one, since we first started dating. She saw me as a coach, you know what I mean? Because that's where I was. Mm. I was a university coach yeah. getting my master's. And so I was just like, fuck, this isn't what I want. And then funny enough, there is a, a touchstone of sorts to me. 
in my life. Uh, did you guys remember the Marvel event in October, like three years ago in 2014, when they announced everything? When they announced oh, the yeah. whole timeline, and it was oh, fucking yeah. epic. Oh, the movie thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Captain America Serpent Squad. Everyone was just like, no one wants so that. So I was and there. And it is in Civil War, and we lost their shit. Yeah. yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah, I was there with Marika. We oh, got wow. there. We, I called in sick. I was like, not sick, obviously. So I was like, fuck this. I'm going. I'm not missing out on another cool thing. I've never been to a Comic Con. Never been to like anything nerd esque, I guess you would say, or anything like of that. Degree. But you went to the coolest thing that there ever fucking was. So yeah, I would have killed to be in that room. So I got there and we were like fucking late. It was just LA traffic sucks, especially in the morning. And you're yeah. just like, fuck, we're not gonna get in. And then literally it was like, you two come with us. We need to fill up spots. Okay. So then they take us down to the front level and they're like, you need to sit right here. Jim Vavita stacks is right in front of me. No way, stacks. Yeah. And then so then you got, yeah, IGN. And then uh, Josh Whedon sitting next to me like the entire. Nice. And I'm just like, why the fuck are we here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's mm. something to I this. Like, why you were gonna be announced as Black Panther? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That would be something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it was just that, that idea. That might have caused a couple of ripples. <laughs> Maybe. You know. yeah. But um, it was just that idea of like, holy shit, this is amazing. And then I remember leaving it being just like, fuck, why am I not doing this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because granted, yeah. you know, for me, it's been about films and superheroes and comic books. That's been like my thing. You know what I mean? And so it's just like, this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? Granted, yeah. it's, you know, pie in the sky, way down the line type of thing. But it's just like. How do I get there? Yeah. And so it was just literally me and her just like sitting. It was quiet. And I was trying not to get emotional about it with her. And I was just like, because she knew. She was like, this is what you want. Yeah. And I knew right then and there I was going to like, I'm going to have to quit. Or, I mean, like when that time comes, or yeah. like, I'm going to have to just take that next step. Sure. And so I eventually did. Well, that was a big thing for us. I mean, it was that conversation of, well, we feel like this is the right move, but even if it fails, like we got to take it now because yeah. otherwise we don't want to look back in 20 years yeah. and be like, well, I wish we would have done that back then. Yeah. Home. I mean, I'm also, I'm, I'm also a, uh, a big fan of the concept that like there's no such thing as wasted creativity, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna go out and try something, and, and even if one person watches it, I think there's still merit in that. I think that there's still value in that. Um, and a lot of people think that, like a lot of people make the mistake of thinking there is such a thing as an overnight success because once you discover someone, or once you, you know, um, like you and I were talking about Joe Rogan earlier, but like by the time I came across his podcast, it was already one of the number one podcasts yeah. in the world, right? So it's easy for you to look at that and be like, oh my God, that's like, I'm never going to be that because this guy is huge and obviously yeah. that happened overnight. And then you start listening to his stories you're like, no, this guy built a career from the age of 16 to now and now he is huge, right? Mm -hmm. He's been huge for the last maybe 10 years, but that's still... You're, you're neglecting to think about the other 20 years he spent mounting that right. amazing career and building toward that. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, you ask, when do we find time to be creative? I, I like to try to carve out at least, um, at least a half hour of an hour of every day to mm -hmm. just sit and write and mm -hmm. do something on that nature. Sometimes, you know, I go into every day saying I'm going to write for an hour every day. And then sometimes the day happens and you just miss out and you're like, shit, you feel bad, but you write the next day. Um, and that's not something that I ever really even need to any of that to see the light of day. It's mm. just fun to sit with that. And, and it's very um, it's almost a relief for the pressure to be like, I'm just going to put some words down on paper right now and just see where that leads. Sharpen that tool. Keep that yeah. keep that creative part of my brain um, going. And I'm actually I'm fortunate enough to have things like, you know, obviously this is an cr incredibly creative endeavor that we do um, that has afforded me not only the, the, the opportunity to do podcasting, but also to do things like the animated show or do things like love and sex stuff. We can go out there and do little stupid skits um, and work toward that. Um, but it's very easy, even even for me sometimes, I'll be like, you know, Tim and I will talk, we'll go out to coffee. I'm like, oh man, I just wish we could do like this thing. And I keep saying that and not realizing that we are in fact working toward that and we will have whatever those things are one day, but you have to keep that in mind of saying it can't happen overnight. Real progress is a slow uphill sort of like mm. progression. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's very difficult to judge that and see that when you're in the middle of it. Like Joe Rogan could look back on his life now and be like, yeah, I've clearly made it, yeah. right? But if you'd asked him maybe 10, 15 years ago, Maybe he didn't think that, right? Maybe he's like, oh, I'm still struggling trying to figure out what's next after Fear Factor or whatever. And now he's like a household name to anyone that likes UFC or likes comedy um, or likes hunting or psychedelic drug trips. Man shit. Yeah, man what, shit. What's cool <laughs> with you specifically, Nick, is everything you just said is absolutely right. Where when you're in the moment, it's kind of hard to look around and be like, all right, this is what I wanted before. And now I actually got it. But I'll never forget being at Comic-Con year after year with IGN doing the shows. And you would direct the... Mm -hmm. Um, the live shows that yeah, we did that Greg hosted yeah. and then we'd have so many celebrities come through and Greg would be interviewing whatever and whenever we'd go out to lunch we'd all be like man this is fucking cool and rad and you were always just like yeah but I want to be 
I want people talking to me about the thing I'm doing. Yeah, there was you know? always that. There was always that sort of. I mean, don't get me wrong. The stuff that IGN does now, and to this day, the stuff that we started and helped build is still tremendously creative and is awesome. And if that's if that's what you you know, if your goal in life is to be is to kind of chronicle what's happening in the world, I think more power to you. There's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with that. But as a I have designs to create different things, different kinds of media, right? I want to create more narrative content. I want to create content that can live on sort of beyond me, you know, make my name for that. And um, you can say it if you want. I did. I said okay. it quietly. Um, and so, yeah, I would always, it would, it would be bittersweet every time we would stand on a press line and you'd sit there. And you, I don't know if you've ever done a press line before, but what you used to do, I, I think it's probably still the case. I haven't done one in years. It is. But you go, you wait in a, the behind, like in, a, in the back room of a yeah. hotel or the back room of Comic Con, and, you know, whoever, will have just gotten off the main stage or whatever comes back and you're lined up with your camera and then one by one they come down and you get about a couple of minutes fucking mic out everyone else the mic holds out. their mics out everyone's holding their mic out yeah. what's your cookie cutter um, answer and you know yeah. it, the very, from the very first press room I he's did. just such a great director and it was a pleasure to work I mean I have all the faith in the world and that's really why I came together yeah. but it's a team effort yeah and you know and, and then and, uh, well yeah but, but the point that I was that, trying to get to but the point is like, there was always a line right mm-hmm. and like being that being on one side of the line had always always affected me yeah and I, I always want. I always thought, I'm like, it's it's awesome to be here. Don't get me wrong. Like, mm. this is a dream come true. But I wonder. I always wonder what it'd be like to be on the other side of that line. Right. The people that get to come out and talk about this thing they've been working on for like three years, and like, are you know that the all the anxiety and all the nerves and excitement that goes into like letting the press and letting the public see that product, um, and the thing you've poured your heart and soul into. You know, I think that's just this. Maybe I'm over romanticizing it. No, because by all accounts, there's a lot. Like, films are hard and. You know, things TV's hard. It's it's difficult. This is hard work that people go through. Um, but at the same time, it's always, you know, I always like fuck, man. Like seeing Bruce Willis for the first time, or seeing like Chris Hemsworth, or seeing like right. Chris Evans, and these like Robert Downey Jr. Like holy shit! Like it makes it so much more real when you're like, there's only a half a foot. Like the first time I saw Bruce, first and only time I should say that I saw Bruce Willis, I was like, there's a fucking half a foot of air between me and Bruce fucking Willis. Like, yeah, you're talking Die Hard. Yeah. Bruce Willis, like my John McClane, like one of my all time idols. And it, it really made it, it really makes it real for you. Like this guy did it. Mm. He did it. You know, he put the work in and, and and he made the smart choices and he made the sacrifices and and he's able to do the thing that he wanted to do. Um, and it's a it's it's a lesson learned. Like all the people out there that are doing the thing you've always wanted to do are people. They're not yeah. superhuman beings. They're not. Uh, maybe some of them came from bigger and better families or lineage, especially in film, if they maybe came from a film background where their dad or their mom or their, you know, brothers were in film before them. But at the same time, they still get up every day in the morning and think, how am I going to do the thing that I want to do in life? How am I going to continue to do the thing I want to do in life? How am I going to get better at it or bigger at it? Um, and, and that's important because if they can do it, then everyone can do it. Well, to your point, it's just like the idea of like, I'm nothing special, but why not me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. why can't I do it? Like just understanding and just trying to figure out like, okay, like I want to make a movie. How the fuck do you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, we got to get audio, got to get a camera, got to get, you know, are you doing a steady camera? Are we doing a tripod? Are we doing whatever makeup, wardrobe, mm-hmm. you know, insurance, things like that. Mm-hmm. Getting, getting actors. Are you going to have actors or are you going to professional actors? Or are you going to have your friends? Are you going to get, you know, a real set? Or are you going to do film in real places? You know, are you going to have, mm-hmm. you know, this, that, and the other, and you just got to figure out. Well, like, yeah, and you mentioned ego, right? And I think ego is an interesting thing because it's a double-edged sword. A lot of people say the word ego like it's a, uh, it's, it's like it's a bad word, mm-hmm. right? Like you're not supposed to have an ego about things. But there, but in order to do what we do, you have to have a little bit of an ego. You have to have a little bit of a, that, a voice in the back of your head that says, you know what, you can do this. Like, you know, you can go out in front of 1,300 people or 1,000 people or, or stream in front of 25,000 people and be confident in what you're saying. Mm. Um, and, you know, you've got all of your past experiences that can tell you, like, yeah, you're okay doing that. But at the same time, there has to be a little bit of you that kind of blows smoke up your own ass, you know what I mean? And, and, say, and gives you that confidence to be like, you know what, fuck it, just go try it. You can do this. Why not? Yeah. Right? And that's why I think everyone reveres Kevin, and rightfully so, Kevin Smith, because he was the one person that said, I'm going to just do this at all costs. And it actually worked out. Mm. And unfortunately for everyone, Kevin Smith, there's probably 10,000 uh, failed filmmakers that are right. now doing other things. But um, again, going back to my original point, like I don't think, like I honestly, Kevin Smith said something once on a podcast. I'm, I'm sure he said it more than once on a podcast. Yeah, because knowing Kevin Smith, shows. he says he does, he says the same thing a lot. Um, but it's always very inspirational. He said, you know, he maxed out his credit cards, and even if and if Clerks had failed, um, he knew even on that the day after. Uh, like I, he talks about how he took it to the first film festival and no one showed up mm. and he, he was sure he was going to sell it. And after that first film festival, he was like just completely destroyed. And he said, even in that moment, even in that, that, that total pit of desperation He's that he was in, he knew he was going to do it again. And like, he was like, even if this fails, if I don't sell us, I'm going to find a way to do this again. 
And I'm like, that kind of enduring spirit and that kind of that level of faith in yourself is a very important thing to have. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you can't be your own cheerleader, no one else is going to be Yeah. ever, you know, if you can't, if, and this is the same always, no matter like at what level you're at, there is always a, you always have to be the person in the room that believes in yourself the most. And you have to convince everyone else around you. You know, you look at guys like The Rock, you look at guys like Kevin uh, Hart, mm -hmm. guys that are like at the top of their careers after like 20 or 30 years putting it in. And you're gonna tell me you stand in a room with that guy and that guy's not gonna just fucking like emanate. Light it up. Like just, you know what I mean? Like he's gonna light up the room with how much, how awesome that he is, maybe in a positive or negative way, depending on the star you're talking mm -hmm. about. But like The Rock believes in himself. Yeah. He really does. And if he doesn't, and I'm sure there are moments, I'm sure there are days when The Rock wakes up and he's like, fuck, I don't want to hit the weights again for the one billionth time. Yeah. But he finds that in himself to be like, you know, that self-talk, whatever that positive energy is that you have to tell yourself every day, he finds it in himself and he goes out there and does it. And he rolls really over and just looks at the bed of money he's on. He's like, I can do it. I'll get out there. I'll pump he's some like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm all it. sore. And then he just dies into his pool of money. And he's yeah. like, this is definitely worth it. He deserves it. Rock's awesome. awesome. He's awesome. Rock's awesome. Tim. Yeah. How do you keep, keep your creativity going? I don't know. I think not growing up is a big part of That's it. That's huge. Yeah. You know, just kind of like sticking to your guns of what you always wanted to do when you had nothing to do. Like just thinking back to being young and playing with Legos, that was all I ever wanted to do. And it was so much fun. It just allowed you to just go yeah, playing with action figures was, that's great too and there's a lot of imagination there but there's just something about legos where you're you're literally able to build whatever you want sure. and then come up with the same stories you would with action figures or whatever mm -hmm. and i feel like that has always stuck with me and as i've grown up i just always think back to being in that mindset when i'm thinking about things and when i watch movies like all i was doing with action figures is trying to recreate what i saw on tv and movies right yeah and it's about taking the moments that you really that really resonate with you for whatever reason and trying to challenge channeling that into your output and whatever it is and like it's it gets really rough because the grass is always greener no matter what 100%. you're doing no matter how creative you are being with the thing that you are doing you always want to be doing something else and you always think that there is something better out there to be doing and i think that the rock i can only imagine that he wakes up and as awesome as he is and as much as everyone looks at him as 10 out of 10, a perfect human being, I'm sure he's just like, am I doing the right things? Is there more I could be doing? Like, is this the thing that I want to be doing? I have all this money, but... There's always someone who seems more successful or is doing it in a different way that makes you go... That has something yeah, yeah. that you don't have. And yeah. a lot of the times it's not a uh, physical thing. It's more of, man, they're able to do that i wish i was able yeah. to do oh, you see that. you see it all the time with with uh actors and with with like celebrities like the rock is a perfect example right like the rock started with wwe um went into it was like i want to be in movies right i want to be the next action star arnold schwarzenegger whatever you call it right started actively pursuing that put the work in did the rundown did movies like that um and then and now he's doing he's producing his own stuff so he's got seven bucks production seven buck production seven, seven bucks. bucks seven bucks yeah um i believe if i'm not mistaken they're producing ballers um, and a number of other things. He's now he's working into the online market, all that stuff. And Ballers, by the way, I know you guys don't watch. I love awesome. Ballers. We're talking about I watch oh, Ballers I every week. Do you watch it? I saw part of season two. It's so he doesn't good. like sports. It's so it's, just on, can't it's, get on it's, it's good. You're, You're a monster. monster. It's You're a sports. monster. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guarantee at some point the Rock's going to be like, uh, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know the Rock, but I'm sure at some point he's like, how do I get into more like less actiony stuff, more dramatic stuff? Maybe he's going to angle toward maybe getting a maybe getting an Academy Award, right? Um, it's president. not beyond that being you president. Know. Yes, that'd be awesome. he could be. I mean, he could he could take a step down from Academy Award and become president of the United States. That would be that'd be interesting. Um, although, Rock, if you're listening, we need you. Come on. Be our hero. Um, <laughs> but I think what you brought up is a very interesting point. Right. When we first started podcasting, the reason I found uh, the Joe Rogan experience and, uh, you know, some other like a small cast, things like that was because I realized that I wasn't a fan of the product that we were making. And I think that's incredibly important, right? If you're trying to make um, films and you don't like watching movies, you're not. It's not going to work out, right? Oh, yeah. If you can't, if you don't have a ongoing list of your top ten movies, that's every time someone asks you, it's completely different. You're probably not. You probably don't have the passion for doing this thing, right? Um, same with me and podcasts. I was like, hey, we're going to start a podcast. You know, when we decided to do the Game of Reggae show uh, two, three years ago, um, three years ago, three years ago. Uh, I was like, I don't actually listen to podcasts, and. I think that's bad. I think I probably should probably look out there and try to find someone that I can vibe with. And lo and behold, as I started listening to, to, to Rogan and to, and to Kevin Smith and to a number of other podcasts like The Business, um, 
I became a fan of not only the medium, but the personalities behind it. And I think that's very important because if you can't say to yourself, like, eat a slice of humble pie, you're like, there are people out there that do it better. You know, Tim's a perfect example of this where he always looks up to the guys with rooster teeth. Um, and there's two ways of looking at that. There's that, pff, uh, whatever, you know, I'm not a fan of their content, so their content doesn't matter. Or mm. if they're doing something right, I should probably try to figure out at least give this a chance and try to be and, and put my ego aside in that regard to become a fan of this and see and be inspired by this because that's really what it all it's all about, right? Anyone that's ever wanted to make a film or make a song or make a rap video or anything like that, that didn't happen in a vacuum. At some point you saw someone else do it and you were like, that's cool. I want I want to be able to do that, right? right? And then those that steps between what you're talking about, which is the step between being like going, oh, that's really cool. I wish to, you know what? I'm going to take that first step and start trying to be that person that does Get my this. feet wet a little bit. Um, that's the single most important step. And then from that point on, it's just about enjoying the ride because who the fuck knows where you're going to end up. Circling okay. back to way earlier in this when I was talking about you and the Comic-Con mm -hmm. thing uh, to bring it to Rooster Teeth. I thought it was funny because two weeks ago when we went to Rooster Teeth for the week and we were yeah. on all the podcasts, so much of it just was like, so tell us about kind of funny. And like, I had a moment where I'm like, Nick doesn't even realize it, but we're literally doing the thing that he always wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, no, 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 trust me. Like, I mean, we I, sat there and people were interviewing us about our creative output. Yeah. It's very cool. I mean, and that and that's too, and that feeds the ego, and that feeds obviously the creativity, right? Like right now, I'm getting that that level of fulfillment and validation as a creator, which is good. And once you start getting it, of course, you just want more of it, right? right. You want to give back. You want that that cycle of like, and that's that's why creativity is, is probably the single most important thing in what we do. Just the concept of it, even if you don't narrowly define it, it's just the concept of putting out that energy into the world with the fingers crossed that you're going to get it back tenfold. You well, know? I mean, it's, it's speaking to what you're talking about and speaking to what you were talking about, Chris, with, you know, your podcast in the beginning is the fact that what it comes down to is if you're making a product, you believe in, you'll find other people who believe in that product. Mm -hmm. If you're having, f f having fun doing is what we all, why we all started yeah. this and yeah. where it all began. But for you not to enjoy how, what you were putting on the podcast forever, go find new podcasts for you to be into it for a year, you said, right. And mm -hmm. then be like, well, I'm not on the path I want to be with it. That's always the interesting aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting as, we've gotten bigger and kind of funny grown the more and more people now not in a bad way but want to change that vision or whatever right. you know what i mean like why why are you doing this why wouldn't you do this why aren't you doing this show why wouldn't you do it this way and it's like i understand that and i respect that you want that but if i don't agree with it i can't make that happen mm -hmm. i can't you know force your vision into my vision because then it'll be i'm doing it for the wrong reasons and then why would i won't be happy in the end and you won't be happy either because the product won't be genuine right. if that makes sense no it makes perfect sense yeah. and that's the whole reason why we did this in the first place right was to do some to do what we wanted to do and hopefully attract a group of people out there that would help yeah. support us in that by watching it and, and you know, buying ridiculous t-shirts. <laughs> and that, to me, that is why I think that we are the luckiest people in the world we because to me, Kind of Funny Live is my ultimate creative output mm -hmm. where I'm like, I'm that is what I like to do. I look up to people to put on awesome live shows and to be able to be like, all right, what would be cool for our audience to see? And to be able to think that way, I love that so much. And I love that we've created a, a place where people just want to be entertained by us. Yeah. So yeah. anything that we do is already going to be enough, but that just puts the pressure on me to be like, no, 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 no. Take it up a notch. It can't be just be enough. Like yeah. this is the opportunity to be creative and give back. And like, that's a really unique thing that we have going for us. Like not, there's other people that have it, but it's ours is unique because it's ours and because the people are here for us. So like what you're saying about, you can't listen to, the, to what other people want because that isn't, Gonna, that's going to be so disingenuous and not sure. the right product because yeah. they're here for us. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's the difference between like being a thought follower or a thought leader, right? Like if you're – the reason people, you know, when they fire up their YouTube app on their PlayStation 4 and they're like they're looking through their subscriptions or they're looking for the, whatever the recent content is, the reason they pick us over anything else out there is because we are doing – we're making something that appeals to them, right? Um, and it speaks to them. And you have to like – there's something genuine about that that you just you have to kind of be be truthful to yourself when you're making it. Otherwise, I really believe that maybe people can't put their finger on it, but subconsciously they 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 kind of like they're like someone's like trying to cater to me specifically. And I don't I don't know if they like that or not. Too yeah. on the nose. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess there's a, there's a mix of that, right? Like mm -hmm. obviously, if if tomorrow I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna talk about wine forever. <laughs> like it might not vibe with the people that have come here to hear us talk about movies and comics and games right. and things like that, right? So Gio I understand. would be really stoked. Gio would be stoked. Subscriber like, number one. Gio would start the podcast with me. <laughs> yeah, call it Winecast. 
Um, I'm sure there's already wine cast. Um, but yeah, but I mean, that's that's important, right? But that's also a very scary thing because when you're stepping out and you're starting to create your own content, the first thing you do is you're like, let's emulate uh, the things that we see around us, right? But then slowly but surely, you have to come out of your shell and you have, and this is something I struggle with too all the time, mm. uh, which is just being saying like, I'm going to now, if it's a podcast, really share what I really feel about things, right? But you're going out on a limb because you're actually like, you're exposing yourself to people. It's easy for me to be like, you know, for the morning show, for instance, is a very easy thing for me to do because I don't necessarily have to run an opinion on something. I can just, I just get to go out there and be like, here's all the cool stuff that's happening in the mm. world that we like, right? It's not really my stuff, but like this podcast is, a, I'm a little bit more exposed because, you know, I bring topics to the table that I want to talk about and I clearly have an opinion on. Um, and that's a very empowering thing, but it's also a double-edged sword because, you know, it opens up for people to disagree with you, mm. but that's good. That's thought provoking. That's, that's, that's real engagement with people, you know? Um, but it's, but it's difficult to do for sure. Very nice. Is that good? I think that's good. Just two little quick questions. Sure. Or at least it's down this topic. So I'll go with Tim. Mm -hmm. Tim, when are you going to record your first mixtape? Oh my God. Oh. We're working on it. See, well, we are. We are. We are working I, on so it. So here's the thing. That's like, one way to put it. One of the things I like a lot. I'm, I'm answering this question for Tim. One of the things I like about a lot of what we do is we, the three of us, and Kevin included, and Andy, and, and uh, sometimes Cool Greg, um, we all push each other toward things. Yeah. Which is good. Like I, I've often said, and I know this about myself. Like I can't, I could not do any creative endeavor by myself. I can't do it. I just, I'm not the Kevin Smith of the world where I'm like, I'm going to go out there and do it and rally people around me. I need a group of people that can push me who I can be like brotherly competitive with and people who I recognize the talents of me and go, Hey, you should do this. Hey, you should do this. And with Tim, I've subtly over, not so subtly really just blatantly over the past like four months been like, <laughs> Hey, we should, here's an opportunity to do a cool rap song. Here's this thing. Here's this thing. And I'm wearing him down. Like, hey, I'm wearing uh, him down. Speaking I need which, a rap song for the animated show. I need that. Like, the, the script's already... This well, I was fucked. Yeah, there's another one. But uh, <laughs> when we did the Star Wars thing, I need a Star Wars rap. You needed it. I'm like... And you fucking knocked right. it out of the park. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. You did it in a day. Yeah, well, I know. Well, it was the funniest I, part I'm of the happy. I'm happy. I love that show. I love it so much. That is definitely where my passion lies, is the comedy rap shit. And one day, we're going to go all out. We're Don't know rap. when, though. But that's the best thing, too, is like... And that. That's what's hard for a lot of people. To, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's hard for a lot of people to understand and recognize when that's happening. Like, Tim writing a verse of the Ewok uh, rap song in, in the animated show may not seem like it's the end all be all because it was a small blurb in, a, in an animated show mm -hmm. that got, you know, 40,000 views or whatever it got. But that is a stepping stone to the next thing he's going to do. Right? It keeps the tool, tool sharp. It keeps people thinking about Tim in that regard. Right. And it, it all builds toward itself, right? It, that's the kind of thing that you look back 20 years later and you can point to and be like, oh, yeah, that was that little stone that I put on that one step that got me to this next thing, that got me to this one thing, that got me to, like, actually making the, the 12 album or the 12 uh, song mixtape album, whatever we want to do, or, right. or a bunch of videos, things like that. So it's important to see that. All right, and so then Sorry, Tim, I, I just have one no, smaller right. question. <laughs> but since you answered his question, I'll ask you. So okay. Again. Yeah. Perfect. When is Nick going to complete his screenplay for about San Francisco or that idea? Oh, had? interesting. About San Francisco. Yeah, I remember him saying something on a topic about you having this like affinity for my San love Francisco. letter to San Francisco. That's something along that. Um, that's in the back burner. I haven't even heard. I must have missed. Yeah, that I one. had an idea uh, for an indie film that. I, 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 by the way, I have like I'm sure you're like me. I've got literally just folders oh, yeah. of synopsis <laughs> for movies that I want to write one day. Maybe sometimes they're one line, sometimes they're paragraphs. I think I have like 20 pages. Um, but yeah, I had this idea of kind of mirroring what I felt before I was, before we left IGN, which was um, kind of trying to touch base or, or find that part of everyone that's like wanting to change their life. Like similar to where, where you're at right now, right? You're in this job, you're in this world that you know you don't belong to anymore but you don't know how to change that and how does that manifest itself and like what would happen if you're in that state and you're on the breaking point and you just decided to go out into the city and like use the city as a distraction for one night and like what would that look like Hot. for San Francisco? Become you know? the road. Well, not even you, the road, but like, but San Francisco to me has, <laughs> San Francisco to me has been, um, then you take, you can't stop and you start taking over the buildings and then you're the blob. It's yeah, pretty you are the blob. blob or spoilers, <laughs> that thing in Guardian. Never mind. Um, thanks. I haven't seen it. Don't worry about it. It's a, it's a pivotal moment in the movie. Cool. Um, but yeah, but, so, but San Francisco has meant so many different things to me over the years, right? It's been the city that I grew up in in my 20s. It's been the city I met my wife in. It's been the city I committed to her as a man. And, and you know, I really became an adult and a man. And um, it's also the city that is a, is a complete and total fucking... <laughs> Kevin, I am a man. Committed to, to, not. Committed to her so as a man. Just, <laughs> <laughs> is he playing Zelda over there? Yeah, What's he doing? Of course still he is. Zelda. Oh, oh, oh the quest up. to be better than Nick begins. Um, so anyway, so that was, that was the general concept, right? Look, what happens when... It, when a, when a person who doesn't want to face his life decides to use 
the city as a as a playground basically and a distraction. And what does that look like for a night? Just a slice of life kind of movie. Um, I have it on the back burner. It's there, but that's mm-hmm. very deeply. That's a that's a that's a deeply meaningful thing to me. That's it's very difficult to rally and like want to touch that like get in touch with that part of yourself every yeah. night. He has I mean, other screenplays that he is further along in. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that so, was the only one that came to mind to me. How's our movie come? It's good. We canceled it. We canceled our writing date yesterday. Remember? I know. Well, yeah. That, that, we canceled the writing date. We didn't cancel the movie. But it's good. Right. Mom, I read the, the outline one. last week. That's like, one's gonna get good. done. I like this. Gotta put another movie. Fun. I actually do it. I will. You know actually, I'll do that tonight. Okay. Today. Committing. Okay. I'm good. Nick. Yeah. What's your topic? Playboy. Who, Doctor? Ooh. So, um, over last weekend, I watched an Amazon Prime series called American Playboy. The Hugh Hefner story. How is it? I see it all the time. I watch. I watch that. You know, Good Girls Revolt or whatever. Right. And I want to now, but I saw this one. I didn't. I didn't jump. Um, it is a docu drama. So I thought it was going to be more of a documentary series. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the medium of docu drama. But um, it's not a documentary in that it's not a totally objective perspective. You can definitely tell that it was made by people in Playboy. Uh, okay. It, it paints Playboy in a very positive light throughout the years. Um, As it should. Rightfully so. But then there are some other there's some points that, you know, for instance, during the 70s where he's getting basically like Hugh Hefner is basically being torn apart by feminists because it was the women's movement. Um, and he, you know, they kind of gloss over that a little bit where it's like, hey, uh, we're fine. Well, we're this woman, Gloria either. Steinem, started some trouble. But anyways, then yeah, the 80s came around. The, yeah. So so it's more about sort of Hugh Hefner's life and how he was innovative and, and recognized that there was a need for or not a need, but an opportunity for that in the magazine world of the 50s and 60s of like a, man, a men's magazine, not not necessarily nudity. There was plenty of magazines that were printing that. But he recognized like he was a big fan of Esquire, worked for Esquire, realized that Esquire wasn't the magazine he wanted to do anymore and said, fuck it, I'm going to go do it myself. I'm mm. going to make the magazine that I want to read, which is about like what is the modern man in this day and age? What is he like? What kind of music does he listen to? What are his political beliefs? Um, you know, and, and throughout the years formed this very progressive magazine that – um, supported uh, civil rights, women's lib, things like that. Like all of these tr- tremendous, like, you know, was against the outspoken against the war in Vietnam, which I didn't realize. Um, so my question to you guys is like, what's your, what is your perception of Playboy? Um, where does that lay with you? And no pun intended there. And then <laughs> how does it sit with you now that they've, they chose to go more toward the editorial site, but have recently then now decided to publish nude when did that happen? Because I remember it being a big deal if they were no longer going to be a nude magazine. And then I saw a, an article I th- recently, I thought, that they were coming back to article that I saw nudity. in February. Okay. Um, nope, that's not it. Can't remember your password? Uh, in February, the 13th of February, uh, this is from Suzanne Bresling, says, Playboy's back to peddling nudes. Just in time for Valentine's Day, Playboy has announced its 63-year-old magazine will return to publishing naked women. In 2015, the magazine faced... The magazine faced with competition from the internet where anything goes when it comes to sex. Stop running images of unclothed young ladies. By all accounts, including my own, uh, the results were terrible. <laughs> now, Playboy Enterprises is back in the skin game with its March-April 2017 issue. I took the liberty to download a copy. It was $6. Uh, here's what it's like. And she goes on to describe uh, what it is. But important to note that Cooper Hefner, is the who is, uh, I think, the youngest son of Hugh Hefner, um, oh, really? has Cooper? taken over. Cooper. Cooper. Oh. Yeah, and he's, awesome. in docu- he's in the doc. King Koopa. As well. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, well, interesting. Okay, so it's back. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll read this actually because I think it's I think it's important to the. Yeah, that's a really long article. Yeah. What's funny yeah, about it's this though it's is like long. this is it's bullshit to me because what is bullshit? as somebody that hasn't read Playboy ever, yeah. mm-hmm. an article ever, yeah, everyone's always like, oh. Like, you come for the pictures, but you stay for the articles. Like, yeah. the articles are actually really good and whatever. It reminds me of the, oh, man, the, the fried pickles at Hooters are so good. It's like, no. Like, can we just allow ourselves to appreciate sexuality and mm-hmm. not have to come up with other reasonings? Like, And I'm not saying that the writing is not good. Okay. But it's like, I don't like this thing where we need to come up with a... Excuse. An excuse. It's like, let's... Playboy should exist as... Whatever Playboy, it wants to be. As it, yeah. Whatever it needs to be, not with the, you know, it's it's smut, but it's also that. It's like, all right, can it just be that? The can problem just was that the articles that were is? really good. 
as you know, somebody with a degree in magazine journalism, like Playboy is one we talked about in class all the time. They really did have great yeah, to articles. Put, to put it really in context, like and I'm not. The egg thing, I, no, to, I know. To well, put in context, well, no. uh, they they were known for doing, and this is something they got, they they talked about uh, in the documentary, really in depth, really lengthy interviews with people. Yeah, great profiles. We're talking about like they would do eight hour interviews with people and boil those down to like pages and pages and thousands of words. Um, so they really did have a journalistic integrity, at least. From from a writing perspective, um, but obviously not enough for it to be <laughs> successful. Like that's the thing is like that. What? Why not just make an Esquire then? Like why include? The because Esquire is a half step. I love it. I I subscribed to Esquire for a long time. Loved Esquire, and I have nothing against it now. Like I hate it. But that I mean that was the whole thing of like Esquire and Maxim are just trying to be the more successful because there are no nudes in it playboy right because yeah. it is we're the men's magazine here's men's fashion and here's that and here's these scantily clad women but it's aren't PG-13, naked yeah which exactly will sell more than our rated movie right yeah, so yeah it's exactly like the same type exactly of exactly the same argument yeah, yeah. And that was the thing of like that's why it's just it's it, it, the pg-13 versus r-rated is a great way of putting it right where it's like Maxim, it, well, I mean, I liked in college a lot. I think most people did, right? I haven't read it in years, but I remember eventually getting to the point where you're just like, I don't care what's happening in spring break with your beer bongs or whatever. You know what I mean? Like whatever the thing they're talking about. And then Esquire, yeah, being a bit too stuffy and having a, you know, like, oh, well, this is what we're doing. It's like, well, if all you to do is talk about $1,000 suits or whatever, why would I be reading this kind of thing either? And Playboy then is off on its own tangent trying to do its thing. And Playboy, but it is the same thing of, I can't give you a rundown of what, my pros and cons were with Playboy because I, I never bought a Playboy because for me it was I don't I, I would love to read the articles I don't want to be buying a magazine that's all nudity somebody judging me or whatever yeah I think that there's two sides to that because I did buy a couple of Playboys most of the time with it it was when it was like WWE sure or WWF I guess back then like Sable people, and Tori Sable Wilson and Tori, yeah. which was like shout out to that that was great um, when or Christy Hemme or whatever they all they all did their things uh, but. I just it's just ridiculous to me that like those can't just be separate products and that's not to say they can't exist in the same magazine I just feel like there's no point I feel and I feel like the fact that they're going back is showing that p Enough people are not gonna buy it just for the article sure no yeah I mean you're not wrong I mean because I did the thing where oh I was in an airport years ago well, I guess Sometime between 2015 and February of 2017 when I saw a playboy on the stands and it was right after they'd done this I was like oh I was in the airport that's Playboy. There's no more nudes in it. Interesting. I picked it up and paged through it. It was like a Maxim or a Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition, right? The way they were photographing these ladies. And I was like, huh. And I was like, I've always liked the articles. I'm getting this plane. I'm like, no, but I don't want to read this in the plane. You and, know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't, because uh, somebody on that plane's not going to understand what I'm no, looking exactly. at. No, right. exactly. But even then, like, to be fair about my argument about uh, they're obviously going back because it's not selling well. I don't necessarily think this is going to solve their problems. They're going to sell well. The no. internet exists. You can exactly. see anybody That's the problem. This is just print in general. And, and I do think Playboy has done a great job in the last couple of years, especially with their digital digital division of highlighting people and uh, doing photo shoots and stuff that are the PG-13 stuff, like things like yeah. they did with Naomi yeah, and Kyle right. from IGN right. Oh, right. or Meg Turney and like a lot of those people. And it's just kind of bringing attention to, uh, I'd say, up-and-comers, but they're, they're more somebody that from a different medium than different industry. being a model. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the answer is for Playboy or how they fix it. Yeah. Chris, what, what's your take on all this? I don't really have one. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I've been quiet. I mean, because I never really had it in my house. Yeah. I was never really... Mm -hmm. um, I had a cop and a nurse for a mom. So yeah. A cop for a dad, mom, a nurse for a mom. And so I never really had it there. And I always had more comic books and magazines of like gaming stuff and just learning about life and shit like that sure. underneath my bed. Yeah, I yeah. never really had like a Playboy. She tears it, it open. There's just incredible Hulk comics. Like, what the hell? <laughs> she Hulk. Like, but anyways, it was just that idea. I guess maybe because I felt guilty if I ever had something or if I sure. caught in that. Just well, that's the thing is it feels, killed, it feels you, yeah. you, like when you go, even when you reach up just to look at it, you got to pull it up from like the black sleeve or whatever. Right. And then you just start peeking and I was like, what are you doing? And you're just like, Shit, yeah, you, know, yeah. you get that like scared mouse look to it. Totally, so, totally. I mean, I don't really have a, a say in it, so yeah. I'm on the side of Tim. Like, I'm just kind of like, it is what it is. I mean, that's the thing; it is what it is, and I don't know how you continue to succeed in that market. But that can be said for any of the magazines. You know what I mean? Like, how does well, a that time can be said for a newsweek written anything? word yeah. right now? You know? Well, pr I mean, I think I think the problem is that it's the immediacy of the internet. It's the problem we face all the time with the games cast, right? Where we want to talk about something, we t by the time we get it to the games cast, it's been talked about and we're done all these different things because everything's so instantaneous. Mm -hmm. That's where the morning show pops in and helps out so much. Yeah, um, that's what's interesting. Like, it's, it's funny that I, f I didn't even think about that the fact that you probably had, would study uh, Playboy in college. Um, didn't that, we all? 
Well, that, but that's the thing. Like my first, uh, my like, my first touchstone for Playboy, I think, was like my buddy Todd's dad had like all of them in the garage. All of them. Like I mean, all of them. Like he had been collecting for years, and so you'd go into the garage, and it would just be stacks of Playboys, and he he'd always be like, "Don't take any of them all, no." And we took a we took so many of them. He never fucking knew. <laughs> of course, so there's so many of them, right? But so me, to me, Playboy is a like a porn magazine, basically. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it had articles. I didn't care. I saw some squiggly lines that looked like the alphabet, but who the fuck know? Who cares? Nude women, right? You're you're a teenage kid. You're you know you're 13. You're 14 years old, and you're like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, that's all. That's how you market that that magazine in your own brain. Um, I think that's that is so important to the formative years of so many people of different generations. I had the exact same experience with Kevin when we found his dad's stash, which was not every issue. It was a like three three issues in the back of a file cabinet underneath a whole bunch of other shit. And one day we just found it in the garage and we're like, "Holy shit!" And that was when me and Kevin showed our first boner. Boner, you know, yeah. together it was together. Boner. Don't look at mine. Um, Don't look at yours. But yeah, no, I mean, that, like, I'll never forget that, like, that because it totally was like, oh my god, is someone gonna see us? But it's like, even when we knew no one was seeing us, it still felt wrong. Oh, yeah. But God, it felt so right. There's just like that. Is, I'm like, dude, I appreciate this shit. Shout out to the human body. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing too. Like, like depending on what, what you choose to believe, or if you if there's there's a lot of rhetoric that goes into it. But Hefner's original concept was that he was. Uh, they 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 touch on this a little bit where he had read um, Kinsey's book, um, the name of which is escaping me now. But it's the the famous book about sex and like mm -hmm. and how people. Uh, no, it's it was actually featured in Masters Thomas of Sex. Sutra. They 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 talk about the book the itself, Bible. but. I can't remember what it's going to be called. I'll look it up later. Um, but basically, it was the, the Kinsey Report, I think is what it was called. There was a movie about that it. That sounds right. Lee Neeson. Um, where basically, Kinsey had interviewed, like, I think it was thousands of people, talked to couples, single people, guys, talked about their masturbatory habits, how often they have sex, how often they fantasize about same-sex stuff, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, all this stuff. And that that book came out, that report came out, and it was the first thing that Hugh Hefner saw. Like, when he saw that, it was eye-opening for him because he's like, holy shit, we are an incredibly... Uh, repressed society when it comes to sex. So why not put a magazine out there that that not only celebrates sex but also celebrates it in terms of like what it means to be a modern man. Like you know this was years before the sexual revolution happened in the seventies, um, in sixties and seventies. So like you're talking fifties when he's like guys didn't you didn't talk about sex at all as far as men were concerned. You didn't have a penis. You just worked hard and you know probably drank way too much. Um, and Thank so I God. think it's so I grew up in the. You right grew up era. in yeah you I mean you grew up in an era with with a bunch with with parents that were hippies right like yeah. they they'd experienced that and I think they were I think all of us that as as our parents were probably a lot less a lot more progressive than the, the generation, generation that came before, before them yeah. my, yeah. my my mother and my father certainly if you had met my, any of my grandparents you'd be like holy crap these people could run a prison like with precision um, <laughs> like never talk about it uh, but that's so it's interesting to see like so it's interesting to see like he you know on on one level you happen to like. I kind of, it's it's cool to see that he worked for a magazine that wasn't quite what he wanted, and then went out and sure, made, made his own thing. His own thing. I think that's like obviously the entrepreneurial spirit of what we've done. That's really inspiring to me. And and watching his steps and watching him follow his passion and seeing that pay off um, in, in dividends and, and in in that social influence that he had is really really cool. Um, but he like I honestly believe that he followed his heart and followed what he believed in. And a lot of the times he would use Playboy as a. Uh, as sort of a loudspeaker to 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 affect social change, um, but it is it is kind of a double edged sword because you do have it, but you also have the open criticism of like why couldn't you do that without having to market like the object the, the seemingly objectification of women right like there's yeah. no there's no nude guys in the magazine there's nothing but just Ooh, smoke play girl Sean Michaels there's come play on girl there's play girl um, and of course they go they go into penthouse and how penthouse like you know escalated the war of like how much they'd show because up until penthouse came on the scene. You, there was no all oh, they showed were were breasts and and, yeah. like, and butts. There was nothing, you know, no no pubic region whatsoever. Um, but it's pretty fascinating. So like, what's your? I mean, you finished the series. I finished the series. It's really cool. Obviously, you know, again, it's a docudrama, so they sure, are. Sure, sure. There is a narrative aspect of it that is painting it. In a what are they life. painting the future? Because um, for me, the future looks incredibly bleak. Well, this was they, I thought the you know 2015 move of no nudes was a move of mm -hmm. let's try to get people in, let's try to compete with Esquire and Maxim and all these other different things, and that did not work. So now let's try to go back to what's worked before, which is them floundering and not knowing what they're doing. Um, fortunately, the series ends before they broach that topic. Mm -hmm. It ends with Hugh Hefner basically stepping down and handing over the um, the reins to his oldest daughter, I believe, and now I believe Cooper. 
uh, Hefner is the creative director, but I don't think she runs it anymore. I think he runs it now. Okay. Um, but yeah, they don't they don't broach that topic, and I think rightfully so because I don't know if they have an answer for that, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there is a play a time like you were talking about what our touchstone is. Well, obviously we grew up in the '80s and '90s, and so Playboy had a whole different meaning to maybe our father's generation, yeah. um, or even our grandfather's generation who may have seen that when they were in their 40s and like realizing, holy shit, there's more out there to life than just like having sex once every six months to make a baby. Um, Nine months, ten months. Nine months of the babies. Eleven work. months. How many? What, what about <laughs> elephants? <laughs> <laughs> well, that what's cool though is the iconography of Playboy is so iconic. Mm -hmm. You know, like that logo, the bunny. Yeah, it means something, and it's crazy that I mean, it works in every way. And of course, they're the open criticism. They deserve to be criticized for a lot of things, and you mm -hmm. can't be successful doing something without other people being like they shouldn't be successful for sure. that. And they're not necessarily wrong by saying that, right? But when you take that, like the what Playboy did for opening the conversation of sexuality to the public and to then define like the, the bunny, like like people dressing up like bunnies mm -hmm. is like that is so like hand in hand with sexual like um, imagery. Yeah. That it's like that they, they fucking succeeded at taking something like sex, which is so ingrained in all of us. And added to it. Yeah. You know, like when you think of sexual images, that bunny is in there. It gets you. And that's, it, and they talk about that too. They, they don't. They talk about how at one point, I think the Playboy bunny was one of the most, it probably still is, um, one of the most uh, recognizable logos. I'm sure made. that it still is. I think it was Even like, the people that have never read a Playboy, I, they know what that is. Yeah. And I think that, that that shows how important Playboy, I think, will always be in popular culture. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, but you mean important in a legacy sense. You think Playboy will be here forever? No, I don't. Okay. But okay. I think that what Playboy did, yeah, yeah, Playboy will always be the default. Default. Everyone, not everyone. I, of course, there's going to be a point where people don't know. But I do think that uh, in 20 years, people will make reference to Playboy for what it is, even if they've never seen one at all or sure. known them. But they know what it is and they know what it meant and means. It's interesting trying to f trace where. When didn't go unquote, not quote unquote wrong, but where it all changed because I remember being such a huge deal when like Entertainment Tonight or like sometimes regular news would cover if some star was going to go do Playboy. Yeah, remember, like, remember that, that was a big thing. Big deal. That like that yeah. was a big deal growing up in that there were and I don't I maybe, maybe I'm just out of that loop now. I don't watch Entertainment Tonight anymore. I don't know what's happening and I'm not really mm -hmm. fe fiending to see different stars naked. So I don't know if that's the thing, but it is. Like, uh, it doesn't seem like they're getting cover stories like that. I, what was the last WWE well, diva to do it? I don't the, even know. The thing is, I think that it's just in a different place now. And yeah. a lot of it's more behind the scenes, but it's all on the internet, right? So it's like, it'll be interviews on the internet, not necessarily a cover story of EW. Yeah. yeah. Where, like, yeah, there's so many stars, especially when you look at, like, the the Disney Channel um, stars that kind of come up. And then they are going to be the stars of the future on the in movies and TV, like they all have those things where like, they're not going to do playboy. They're not going to do nude shoots. They're not going to yeah. do that stuff. And then, cause it, it just limits them or grants them access to different types of deals and movies and sure. TV shows in the future. Yeah. But cause we've seen that multiple times now with, especially now that anyone can just leak their own pictures and control their own mm -hmm. things or start a Patreon that is supporting their, um, prolific use of their body. Yeah, in images, you know, and that is kind of the next generation of Playboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's and that's true. You can't and you don't get that without having that lineage too, which is why it's it's such an interesting and unique sort of brand and 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 the the history of it, the legacy of it. You is you can't deny it, right? You don't have um, you don't you don't have the modern like our modern fight to progress as a society that 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 doesn't sort of demonize sex without standing on the shoulders of a Playboy, right? Um, and it's a perfect example, right? Like, I think, yeah, where it started turning around for them was the 80s and 90s where the internet started, like, you know, DVDs, internet um, started to take a lot, well, the internet specifically started to take a lot of their business away. Um, and yeah, I just think that, like, you more the more and more you look at it, the more and more people will turn around and be like, this is just an archaic product that Yeah, and that's the thing is, I feel like it lost its luster. Anymore. It lost its desire. Like, I, of, of, you know, how I remember how many... That would be a question you'd ask an up and coming starlet or whatever. Are you going to do Playboy? And now I don't feel like I see that question get asked because nobody would care. Why would it need to? Yeah. I will say this though: uh, it's a fascinating documentary. You should watch it because I think you, I think you'd really get a kick out of it. Not the least of which is because they were constantly thinking about ways to expand and reinvent the brand. And one of the things that Hugh Hefner was really good at was he was he was good at 
emerging media and like figuring out how to get on those platforms, especially TV. And so he uh, pitched a series that was basically like, and you go back and watch it, you're like, holy shit, how did this, how did this, how was this even a thing? It was basically like, I, forget, I think it was called the Playboy. Well, they had a couple of them. One was Playboy After Hours, but I think the one we came before that was like the Playboy Penthouse. And basically, like, you, it would start, we'd go oh, up the yeah. elevator, it, and it would, like, the doors would open, and he was like, hi, I'm Hugh Hefner, welcome to the penthouse. And it would just be all of his star friends, whoever he could get for that night, just hanging out. And he'd be like, come on, let's go He'd talk walk, to, yeah, he'd yeah, walk. Yeah, he'd just walk around, and just, like, the, and it was just a party. And obviously, it was scripted, and they, they'd have, like, moments where he'd be like, hey, uh, you know. The movie's uh, coming out soon, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like, Miles Davis, why don't you play us a song? He's like, all right. Or, like, Sammy Davis Jr., or, like, Dean Martin, or, like, like oh, why don't you just sing something for us? He's like, all right, I'm at a piano. Like, I'll sing this, right? And it was all obviously all sure. made up. But it was such a cool concept. I'm like, oh, I wish we could do that. I wish we had all of our friends in close proximity where we could cycle them in, and we just had a giant fucking penthouse where, like, Troy Baker would just be over in the corner, like, strumming guitar. We're like, let's leave him alone today. He's yeah. creating. <laughs> you know, it was very, very cool. Very, very That's cool awesome. concepts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything I'm saying is without any of the education of Hugh Hefner's life and the decisions made at Playboy. No, whatever. no, I don't think, I don't think you're far off. I'm just saying it you know. judging based off where I think, uh, naked, well, you're People judging based on on today's fit. standards. Yeah, yeah, that's not unfair at all. That's that's what you do. That's what that's the question I'm asking. Right? Is like by today's standards, is is there a place in the world for Playboy? Do we need that? Um, I mean, I think the answer is no, yeah, right? Unfortunately, I don't it's, think it's, the answer is yes. It's just like it's going away, like so many other different printed publications. Are. Yeah, yeah, your EGMs. <laughs> yeah, your EGMs. Perfect example. Mm, yeah, mm. that's pretty much it. That's sad. Kind yeah. of, because it is. It's this. <laughs> I, it, it's this icon, right? It is part of Americana and growing up, and that there is Playboy, and the logo means something. And Hugh Hefner has his TV shows in this day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean to put it in context, at one point they had TV shows. Shows. Uh, they had casinos. They had um, airlines, didn't they? they yeah. Well, like they had an air. They had a. Um, they had the big bunny. That's what they called it, which is that big black jet that they, okay. they flew around. Um, they had hotels. So those Playboy hotels. So they, I mean, they were a very multifaceted company, and they just started to. It's just started to erode as the time started to change. Yeah, I mean, I the thing that I appreciate about Playboy is the artistic value of the photo shoots and the fact that they would commit to it, mm -hmm. and it was super well lit, and everything about it was like it was professional, you know. And I think that it's when you the it's sad to see Playboy go because you're not going to get that. Um, but then it's like, but then we, that's what Patreon's for, you know, and if people, that like is they, what Patreon's for. That is entirely. We're misusing Patreon. Like Kevin, we, we're going to we need a schedule a nude photo shoot with, with you. you. No, but it's like, <laughs> I, I think that it's super cool that there is a new generation of creators growing up, both photographers and models or whatever term they want to use for themselves sure. that are trying to like progress the, the medium that they use. Let me let me read this to you guys real quick before we wrap out this segment because I think they speak a lot about the Playboy philosophy, right? Uh, originally, Hugh Hefner set the had this concept of what the Playboy philosophy is, and I think that this is interesting. Cooper, his son, is now trying to recraft that. Um, to quote this article, this is back on Forbes. Um, by Suzanne, uh, Susanna Bresling. Um, he says, the masthead makes it clear. Hef's 25-year-old son, Cooper, sits at the top of the masthead. His title, Chief Creative Officer. Uh, in his letter from the editor, he heralds the dawn of the new Playboy philosophy, noting that the brand's history and the magazine's unapologetic portrayal of nudity and its revolutionary approach to sex. He underscores its real appeal as a cultural groundbreaker, namely, quote, namely the brand's tradition of tenacity advocating for civil liberties and freedom of expression. Today, he notes, our hard-won victories are in peril. Taking a hard swipe at President Donald Trump, he calls for a counter to the rise of neoconservatism and, and quote, politicians who seem uh, comfortable jeopardizing the rights of specific groups in the belief that it will make America great again. Um, there's, this is a great article, by the way. I don't want to read the whole thing here, but you guys should should go on there. Um, he emphasizes, and there's a whole paragraph that emphasizes risque and not raunchy, um, which I think is important. Uh, as well. I'll read this. To be forewarned, Play Playboy has brought back nudity, but it's not even close to graphic. The nude feature, uh, the, the photo, the nude photos feature breasts, Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> and apparently workout Play videos. Music, uh, the nude photos okay. feature breasts and buttocks. That's it. No one's going to confuse this publication with Penthouse or Hustler, Playboy and Co. No, if readers want something more explicit, they know exactly where they can find it on the internet. Um, as a consequence, Cooper's business strategy with, with his Playboy is that he's trying, he's, he isn't trying to compete. He's aiming to own a very specific space, one his father's created with a cool mix of politics, sex, and anti-establishment attitude. Um, it goes on from there. But yeah, I mean, again, it sounds like they're fighting for relevancy in a world that maybe doesn't want them anymore. 
Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't want them because they don't know what they want to be. If you, if they c- commit to this and they spell it out like they have here, and that's what they want to be, maybe you have a shot at it. But that's the struggle they face of rebranding a brand we all know so well or think you know so well. Isn't Everybody that, has an impression of Playboy. But going whether back it's to, accurate or in, inaccurate, who knows? Going back to your original uh, criticism, though, can't the same be said for every magazine that's been around for 50 years? Yeah, and that's a huge yeah. problem, right? I mean, we've been around for three years and we faced that trouble when we tried to do something different. Do. People are like, well, I like what you did before. Like, well, no, we got to switch it up. We got to keep going. We got to keep creating and doing. Mm-hmm. We're to the point where we're small, you know, we're definitely small enough and we're definitely young enough to make those changes. But for them to change that, how do you get that message out? You know what I mean? How mm-hmm. do you get this message out to people who are going to buy Playboy? Maybe people who have just started wrapping their heads around the fact that Playboy isn't using nudes. Like trying to rebrand and do these different things and restructure is hard, let alone hard enough to say something that complicated in a billboard, that complicated yeah. in an ad you're going to run in somebody else's magazine, somebody yeah. else's thing, a newspaper on the side of the street. You know, like it's an uphill battle and you don't know how you want to get it. I like the fact, uh, what I like about this is this Cooper's 25. It says he's this young kid. He's got this vision. He's he, out there. That's what it said, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Trying to inject Correct. all this stuff into it and, you know, make it anti-establishment, make it this, whatever. That sounds more like what you were talking about and what I know from Hugh Hefner starting it. Yeah. Whereas then it close, casually became silk pajamas and him being mar- or not married, but having those three women. What was the show? Uh, uh, girl, the girl, girl next, next door. girls next door. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean. With like, Holly and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brenda, uh, not Brenda. Maybe I don't I know. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I just remember Holly. Kendra. But Kendra, Kendra, thank Kendra. you. And like the way it, you know moved over. I was gonna say before we go to the next topic because I know we're gonna switch over. New uh, Patreon tier level. Yeah. Kind of funny calendar. Yeah. Spreads of all the guys. Yeah. Different suits. We've so wanted we've, to. We've, we've talked about it a long, long time. <laughs> the, the the really if I'm if between you and me the okay. the hold up is, is is Kevin. He mm. won't give the people what they want. They just they want bongos. bongos. NGO. Mm. All they want is a picture of Kevin lying naked with bongos covering his genitalia. So easy, oh, Kevin. That's easy. Oh, they they want. easy. <laughs> they want to see that edition. smooth, perfect. Every month is just cutting a different set of bongos. Very there is quickly. never, he is to this day, <laughs> never let anyone film him almost naked. And it's, it's, it's that is not disgusting true at all. and it's distracting. Kevin, will you be a team second, player? Will you be a team to player? Second last animated show. I, in fact, I think out of all of us, I've been the most naked on camera. Think that, about it. That might now that he says that 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 might be true. That, is, that yeah. sounds Actually, like fake. That's that fake news. That might be. No, that's totally true. true. Tim. Yes. What's your topic? I want to talk about the fire cool. festival. Oh, fire sure. festival! My right. God! So here's the thing. This is at who, the who point, was telling us about this the, for the uh, first time? We were Andy was telling us about that's this. That's right. That's right. So by the time this video posts, this is going to be super up. super old news. But it's still funny. It doesn't matter because it's still worth talking about. So top level <laughs> of the fire festival for those that don't know. Um, yes, fire is spelled with a Y. Why? Of course. Of course. Um, Everyone just assumed that. It is one of those music festivals like Supposedly. Coachella destination or just a destination event you go it's for like people it's not for rich people but only rich people can it's $12,000 really, a ticket so I'm well it ranges sure between a thousand to twelve thousand dollars still a thousand ticket. dollars a ticket is, is not something that it's expensive also Joe Blow, includes Starbucks flights do that. and your place that you're staying and food yeah. Yeah. does yeah, it include yeah, the flight yeah, back yeah. but it, it includes a lot of things not the early flight supposedly back. Right. So that was the idea of it. And it was oh, the right. They've been promoting this thing for months. Uh, ja Rule was. Big old Ja Rule. Partnered with uh, this. this he's co sponsoring it with this 25 year old dude. Don't know his name. It doesn't fucking matter. Fuck that guy. Um, who is this entre- entrepreneurial, like, brat that has a lot of money. And it's just like, we're going to fucking, like, reading interviews with this guy, I'm like, you're you're an asshat. You're a straight-up yeah. asshat. Um, he's like, we're going to do this, like, crazy fun festival. We're going to have people go out to this remote island that was once owned by Pablo Escobar. And fucking it's awesome. it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good time for everybody. They put out a hype video trailer for it, good. and it was fucking hype as fuck. Wasn't yeah, they had a bunch of models and it wasn't en- Emily Ratajkowski. Emily Ratajkowski yeah. uh, was used in the imagery to promote it. She okay. wasn't in the actual in the in the trailer. Gotcha. There was a lot of women in the trailer though, um, very scantily clad. Yeah, a lot of drone shots, an excessive amount of drone shots. Drone this sell. shit looked cool. It looked really drone cool. Drone sell. The island, gorgeous. Yeah. Like super beautiful. The water was just pure blue, and there's, there's like these little Lovely. tiny palm trees everywhere. I'm like, man, this this looks it looks awesome. And the hype video was great. It starts talking about all the different um, artists that are going to be there, including part of the Good Music group, which could include Kanye and those guys. Um, Blink 182 was on the. Oh the yeah, they were. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a whole, there was a couple. Uh, Ray Ray Stremond, I think that's how you say their name. The Black Beatles dudes, dude. I don't I don't know. Not really up to date on that. Migos. Um, the the bad and bougie Vanessa Carlton, 
Vanessa Carlton, not on the list. Okay, but then it very quickly turned into a bunch of people where I'm like, okay, don't know who they are. And it just kept going, kept going, kept going with a bunch of names. And it's like, and then big font. It was like, and special surprise guests. And it's like, all right, cool. So that, that's where that is. Um, It very quickly turned bad because before it even <laughs> happened, fast. Blink-182 pulled out and they put up a, a public statement. This is before Fire Festival even happened. And they're just like, hey, guys, sorry to any fans that want to see us there. It, the production's just not up to snuff for us. Like, we just don't feel like we can put on the show that our fans They were worried about safety, they said, too. And, right? yeah, yeah, they're just like, the, the safety guidelines aren't, aren't there. Like, you know, we're just not there. But it was just like, cool, that, that was that. They backed down. I'm sure people were upset about that. Were but, they? Uh, I'm sure the Blink-182 fans that oh, wanted yeah. to see them were upset. They're killing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Blinkin' Park. Boom. Don't Get do this Blinkin' Park. That's huge. Yeah. Get hyped. Anyways. Was, I'm sorry. I, I blinked. I thought we were Lincoln in 2002. Park and Blink 82 are doing a stadium series for like two dates in New York and Philadelphia, and it's called Blinken Park. Oh, my God. I'm going to get out, I'm gonna get out my That's boot. That's real. I'm going to get out my boot cut jeans and go and back to the year the I graduated video. college. Yeah, no, this is going to be great. Anyways, uh, they, they weren't at Fire Festival, though, uh, and it turns out neither was anybody else. So <laughs> Except the people who went. Except for the people that went. Yeah. So, so wait, how many bands ended up showing up? I don't think anyone uh, as far as I know, none. The festival ended up getting canceled. So okay. to jump ahead, it didn't happen. But people However, still However, thousands of people showed up. So apparently a few people didn't get the email saying, stop, don't come. Uh, well, they canceled it. The, the, so they canceled the show in the AMs before it started the next morning. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it was like a last minute decision that they just canceled it. People started showing up and they were promised that the whole event was going to be in, in some giant dome. Dome wasn't there. They were told that they each had um, glamping tents right. up to a certain this level of quality. Part. I saw these it, tents. Instead, it, they were leftover disaster <laughs> relief tents, <laughs> most of which... Now, big tents, but not uh, glamping. Big tents, by any stretch but of the most of them not even complete. What uh, is a glamping missing walls. tent? Glamping, glamping tent. Uh, so I've glamped before. Oh, Jesus uh, Of God. course, because you know my wife. Um, glamping is where you go, and the tent basically is like a small it's like a small hotel room. It's okay. glam camping. Temp. Oh, glam, glam camping. camping. Why yeah, so you that? go, you have like your own bathroom with your own like little portable toilet that okay, has like okay, kind of okay. running water, and like sure. there's an actual bed that's there, so you're not actually sleeping on the ground. Yeah. Uh, we, awesome. did w we did one night of glamping in Morocco just to see what it would be like. We like sprung for it, and it was... Not as fun as you think it would be. Oh, really? Two reasons. One, I was like, dude, we're going to go in, out into the fucking deserts of Morocco. It's going to be it's cool. Gonna be we're going to ride camels. It's going to be no. so quiet. And like, we're going to get an actual like taste of like what it's like to be out there. We get there and it is just a bunch of asshole Americans drinking Budweiser and screaming all night. And then right as everything kind of calmed down around four o'clock, I kind of, my, my, my eyes started to blink out shut and I get this. What is that? which is not what you want to hear in the middle of the desert. Scorpions. And I look over, and I was like, the biggest fucking beetle you've ever seen in your life was just cold chilling. Like, I just came in. Try to get me out, motherfuckers. And I'm like, I have to deal with this thing now. Now, I mean, the, like, beetles are everywhere. Like, you can, they see them, and it's, like, kind of a, a thing. But is it a beetle with the horns? Yeah. Or? Was yeah. it, like, a scarab from the mummy? It looked like one of those, yeah. right? Especially when it's, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. All you have is literally candlelight or your phone. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I have to deal with this thing and hope it doesn't bite me. And I got it. I was fine. It doesn't bite or anything like that. But Do like, beetles bite? Okay. No, I don't, maybe they do, but no this didn't shit. bite me. Yeah. But like, they, but like, when you walked into the camp, there was like a display of like, like you know, a nice like shadow box or whatever they call them of like, you know, small scorpions. So you're like, cool. That's that might be in my yeah. That might be in my, my glam layer. box. Yeah, my it was fun. Box. It was it was worth. I, you guys saw the videos. <laughs> that was where I rode the camels. Gotcha. That's where I did yeah. the the famous camel butt video that you can see on famous um, on my Instagram. No, Peanut and Pumpkin were in the Riyadh that we went to in the Mid Atlas Mountains. Um, we stayed at a very nice. Riyadh, which is a, was a Richard, a Richard Branson property mm. that was um, fucking amazing. Like, well, the Jaw Rule properties, yeah, less amazing. Not these? Mm, no, 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 not those at all. So, a majority of them were not even full disaster tents. There would be like walls missing. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the beds in them, I was surprised that they they were as bed like as they were compared to the rest of this festival. Um, the bigger thing, the disaster tents. Only a couple thousand of them, not nearly the amount of thousands that they required for the amount of people currently flying to, like Titanic. This, to this fucking island. Yeah, like I mean, Titanic. Uh, when you say flying, you're not talking about like a jetliner's flying them, right? No. This is like a little puddle hopper. They are getting on their like, their, like these fifty these, people these at planes a time and go. that they were told we're gonna take them. They go, plane's not there on time. The <laughs> airplane terminals are just backed up to hell. They get all these fucking planes. Some of them have broken windows. 
Oh my so, god! What the fuck, right? Well, yeah. When I was, I saw some of the tweets of people that were like, "Thank God we got to like the airport and the plane wasn't there," because I guess people had gotten there, they were waiting in line, and they started seeing the tweets of the people of who had the landed. Disasters happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, "Uh, maybe I won't go." So they go, they do this. They were promised uh, gourmet meals for every meal, <laughs> yes. and uh, what <laughs> turns out the uh, the gourmet. Uh, caterers that they had pulled out two days before they the event because right? uh, yeah they didn't get paid so like fuck this we're not doing it so instead they gave everybody for breakfast lunch and dinner this styrofoam fucking container, uh, container with just two shitty pieces of like white toast bread. toast like, like, white the, like white bread toast like not even fucking uh like bread um, straight up like wonder bread with a slice yeah. of cheese i think and then yeah. a shitty looking slice of cheese like a slice of tomato and they're just like hey, it's a sandwich and it's like no <laughs> like that's not at no, all no. kevin can you try to find that just yeah. look oh, up the fire, picture. fire festival oh, yeah, yeah, food yeah, yeah. It's the saddest picture you'll ever see. Right, if you type in Fire Festival into Google and then just, just look at yeah, all the Google images and we can just pull that up. So anyway, the food's a disaster and then eventually the whole thing just gets canceled, but then everyone gets stranded on this island. The government gets involved. Yeah, this is the thing. I I, I had never heard of Fire Festival and it was already trending by the time I figured it out. And so when I was looking at it, it was all people people there putting out tweets begging like the U.S. government to come. Ex- uh, why do I do this every time? Screw it. Get them out of there. Exfiltrate, no. Well, we just did this oh, yesterday. Oh, Christ. Extract. Extradite. Extra, 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 extract. Yeah. I think, okay, yeah. Right. You want extract. Yeah, yeah, extract. yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Extracting them. It's like uh, yeah. Navy SEALs. Yeah. Andy heard Firefest and he finally came into the room. He's like, this is my special. Well, Stop finally, why food, would he be? Kevin. Because these are all the promo images. Well, put them up here in general. Why don't you just, Kevin, do all this up on this screen so everybody can see? Because you got the well, could be gonna, some Emily Rajatikowski and all that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Emily Rajatikowski. Oh, nice. Yeah, so click on one of those food images, Kev. Jesus, that's sad. So that's the gourmet food that they got. Yeah. It's yeah. like there's nothing sadder than like a half melted piece of cheese. Oh my god, it's just so so sad. I mean, that salad looks pretty was good though. Is this supposed to be the plan? Yeah, it was supposed to be something more like that. It's sad because this actually sounds awesome. On paper, if you were like, dude, you're going to fly to this like cool, like where is it? South America or Central America? I don't know, but it's Islands in the Bahamas probably. Follow yeah. Escobar did own it. Oh, okay, so it's just Bahamas. Um, fly to the Bahamas. You're you're on this island with a bunch of people that are just gonna be in this like two party. How, how many how many was it multi day? I assume yeah, like probably. two three days. It was like a weekend. Weekend music it was festival. Two, two weekends. That sounds awesome, right? That sounds really like staying and camping and like it's kind of like a glamping. Like yeah, it's kind of like a Coachella and all these other things. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, um, a, cool, a, a glamping Burning Man. <laughs> yeah, although you can glamp. You can glamp at Burning Man. You cannot. Yeah. Now they they've ruined no, you everything. Absolutely they've can. ruined Burning Man. This Who's is not what Lauren Lanning invented. Did Lauren Lanning okay. invent? Can Lauren you goes to the Burning the, uh, Man every year. He loves it. Then what is no? I want to say now. Kevin, show me images of people okay. getting off a flatbed so, truck here. Yeah, and then when you're done, bring, bring this up. So what happened was back to the story. They're all flying over on these shitty ass planes, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, all their luggage put in these fucking Metal Gear Solid Thrown Five <laughs> containers. <laughs> containers. The sea, the sea containers. All of their shit just thrown in there. Everyone's okay. luggage thrown together. Okay. They get there. The people that do get their uh, day negative one, I guess, uh, lands, <laughs> and they're like, where's our shit? They open up Here the fucking go. thing, and it's just like, go get your stuff. Guess what? So many people's shit got stolen. Of course. Yeah. Then they each had dedicated lockers. No one gave them locks. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't. They tell them they give lockers, but but lockers are like Wait, yeah, like bust. The, locker. the lockers are the best. The lockers are really good. This is ridiculous. And then they started quarantining them. Yeah, they, they started quarantining them. So then, so then people started getting. So then the government got involved, and they're like, "Hey guys, yeah." <laughs> 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 the government gets involved and they're like, hey, uh, no, we need to send everybody back. This is not safe. Like, yeah. this is not you can't at have all. People are okay. going to starve or start to, yeah. Yeah, start to get dehydrated. So that starts getting Concierge. bad. <laughs> then there's not, en- <laughs> there's not enough, like, ability to fly everybody back. So people start getting stranding, which creates panic and everyone starts freaking out. Everyone's tweeting, like, how much of a disaster this is. So back home, we're all looking and seeing this, just being like, what the hell is happening? Yeah, this festival I never heard of suddenly oh, being everywhere. Yeah, yeah, being it's this fucking disaster thing. that sounds like a joke. And uh, eventually people's phones stop getting reception or their phones die and they can't charge it because there's no power. <laughs> How? Here's my question. Then, who? This had. There has to be some sort of criminality to this, right? Oh, yeah. oh they're, they're getting. They're, there has there's to a class be. action lawsuit oh, okay. against yeah. them. They're they're fucked. But I'm wondering if there's going to be criminal. Ja Rule did say sorry them. though. Thank you, Ja Rule. Right yeah. What? Right away. Right, right away. Tell you right now, an apology from Ja Rule is worth a million bucks in my book. Eh. Anyway. Honestly, not really. My thing is, <laughs> this whole story, for as fucked up and ridiculous as it is, 
I just I love the fact that Jaw Rule is associated with it. It's like as if that guy hasn't taken enough losses in his life. There's something about this where I'm like, that's what you oh, get God, for fucking J. with Eminem. You know Let's what I mean? That. Don't do that shit. Yeah, it's J A space rule. I have a quick question. Yes. Go, on, go on the whole you know, fire festival. What is it with destination festivals in general? People just go, love them, go man. But why? To go and get sweaty and dirty and I'm nasty. With you. It's, no, it's fun. Because I've gone to stagecoach or rage coach, you know, where you just basically get drunk, see a bunch of country acts, and it's just yeah. filthy, Hell nasty. Yeah. Granted, it's a lot of fun, but it's nasty. It gets tiresome real quick. You get sunburnt, you get drunk. Uh, cool. So Ja Rule's statement was, we are working right now <laughs> on getting everyone off the island safe. This Spelled is my immediate... Spelled off. Did he spell? Oh, it's right here. It's spelled Uh This is my immediate concern. He wrote, I will make a statement soon. I'm heartbroken at this moment. My partners and I wanted this to be an amazing event. It was not a scam, as everyone is reporting. I don't know how everything went so left, but I'm working to make it right by making oh. sure everyone is refunded. I truly apologize, as this is not my fault. But I'm not <laughs> taking response. But I'm taking responsibility. I'm so deeply cool. sorry to everyone who is in- in- inconvenienced by this. So, I mean, a couple inconsistencies there, but overall, I think the, the sentiment was in that statement of, like, he feels I'm bad. Sorry. I'm sorry. Fire so Festival little, had sorry. promised a cultural moment created from a blend of music, art, and food. Tickets range from 1000 to $12,000, with some VIP packages as high as 250000 If he really was sorry, why didn't he just get on camera and apologize instead of opening up his notes page? Well, notes I mean, that's the, that's, how you get the, that's how you get the information you out of the notepad. Fast, but you, know, you couldn't know, just man. do, like, a video quick video? Same. No, that's no how we none of his PR yeah. people are like, let Ja Rule be on camera right now. Yeah. Someone no, was like, no. let's just we'll edit what he's written and put it hey, out. Hey, Ja, what you got? He's just, oh, I don't know. He's Everybody. Oh, I'm going to lose a lot of money. It's like, oh, shit, not them. That was a good song. Yeah. I, the, to answer your question, I don't know, right? Like, mm. we have Outside Lands Music Festival in San Francisco, and I won't even go to that because it looks like a shit show. Mm. Getting in and out of that, now with Uber, thank God, but it used to be, like, fucking possible well, to yeah. get out there and get back. Like, you would have to walk miles. Mm. And I'm just, I have this, you guys know about me, I'm I'm very paranoid when it comes to everything. And so, like, I don't like the idea of being stranded. Like, my wife was in Palm Springs when Coachella was happening. She didn't go to Coachella. It just happened. She was meeting a friend there that weekend. Um, and people, like, getting in and out of Coachella sounds like it's a fucking nightmare. Oh, yeah. It's like, rough. when the show ends, you have to walk, like, miles That's like to any get to the cars. Event, right? yeah, yeah, so, I mean, that, like, I just I just don't like that concept of, of, of you're stranded out in the middle of nowhere. What if something happens? It's the anxiety of it. It's I mean, scary. I didn't mean stranded in the middle of nowhere. Just being stranded anywhere. I remember when we used to drive from the suburbs out to Allstate Arena, Genius. formerly Rosemont Horizon. No, I'm good, thanks. For WWE shows. And, like, that parking lot was always the worst. And so you knew oh, you were about to spend that. 45 minutes in a parking lot. And so you finally thing. break down and start driving like an asshole. And you have to yeah. start cutting people off and doing oh, yeah. stuff. And, like, that would start weighing on me as we were finishing a show because usually I drove. Right. Right. It's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to get out there now and fight. And or you got to do the thing where you have to leave hella early. Like my dad pulled at SummerSlam 94. Oh. We got to beat traffic. I'm like, Dad, it's Undertaker versus Undertaker. Can we just fucking finish this fight? And we got to go. Uh, yeah, my, my wife. I was, caught it on the way out. Like, it was like a crane in my neck as I walked. <laughs> uh, my wife was uh, was commenting that there was a bunch of people that were obviously she was staying in a, in a semi nice hotel. So there were people there that were of means and they had come back early and they were like, yeah, you know, Lady Gaga was on, but we wanted to beat the traffic. So we'll just watch her on YouTube. And I'm like, I guess, I guess then. you can do that, right? But I mean, you know, they, I mean, to be fair, they caught a whole day of the festival. They caught other bands. They had the, the yeah, whole experience. Really they got to dress in whatever bohemian outfit they decided to buy for that thing that I'm sure they're never going to fucking wear again. Uh, which is always the weirdest thing to me about Coachella is that everyone just adopts that look for no reason. I guess same with Burning Man, where everyone's like, we're just going to adopt that really um, smelly, stinky, dirty look. Like the still American make it kind of hot, bandana, yeah. Bra top yeah. And yeah, sunflowers. Yeah, exactly. It's like I, I guess people get into it, but I don't know. I, I would, granted, this is me saying that never having gone to outside lands, never having gone to Coachella, I would love to see what Coachella is like, but I would like to experience it like how I imagine uh, Beyonce experiences it, where mm-hmm. she stays at the mansion, gets flown in by a helicopter, dropped off, performs for a second, and then walks the fuck out and like gets back on the helicopter and goes. Yeah, that would be the bomb. I just like watching on YouTube. Clicking around, so you're not you, you, you're not one of those people. Well, you get sunburned very easily, so you should just stay yeah, the but fuck even out of the sun. Without that, it's just like I I just do not understand the appeal of festivals. Really? But yeah, no, no, not. Well, at all. you also don't like live music, right? Because I mean, you, you, I you love like shows. Live you like shows, music. but like, yeah. but is so I love live music that I love. I don't want to fucking go see Migos perform. <laughs> like the fuck, nah, nah. Blink One Eighty Two, I would get down with that. Okay. You go, would you yeah, go to Blinkin Park? Huh? Would you go to Blinkin Park? Hell yeah! That's a yeah. Huge Blinkin Park fan. That'd be fucking fantastic. I'm asking Tim. Excuse me. That would be fantastic. <laughs> so back to the topic of Fire Festival. What I did yesterday was go on YouTube and just type in Fire Festival and just mm-hmm. try to watch some videos. Sure. And goddamn, that made the experience so much better. <laughs> There's so many fucking people 
that vlogged their entire journeys. Oh, and it awesome. Does it start positively? Do they dude, have it like? I'm just gonna set the stage. Best we can have. There's this dude named Crispy. Uh, who I, I don't know what his YouTube channel is. I think it's like crispy something. K R I S P Y. No. <laughs> don't I no. no no no. Crispy Fire Festival YouTube it. It's ten minutes and it is a Casey Neistat style vlog of him. It's an edited video of him going throughout his day doing his whole the whole packing thing, for right? Fire Festival. Yep, exactly. It starts off he's packing stuff and it's like a bunch of like crazy drone shots of the island and all this cool shit and like planes landing and stuff and it looks fucking awesome hot girls diving into water and just swimming around and laughing and drinking it's just like it looked like a tupac video like it was dope and he just keeps going with it and it's so fucking good and he's as he starts talking apparently Kevin, he you was, finding this he was one of the guys his name again? crispy k-r-i-s-p-y type in rice crispy <laughs> treat um, and then go get he was one, him and his cream. team were the marketing team for Fire Festival, oh, so they no. just got hired just to market it. Oh, okay. So it's like they they had nothing to do with the production. So they just of all it. hype. These guys they, are all they hype. were just all hype. So they were the ones that shot the hype trailer and, and all that stuff. So they have their own like private building on the island. One of the only buildings on the island is theirs. They're there chilling, having a good time. They're drinking, having like they're like, oh, it's the fire festivals tomorrow. Everyone's flying in. It's gonna be a great time. And they're all drinking. And then they they're like, we're gonna go out. There's this little island there. For some reason, they're diverting everybody that lands over there. I think it's a pre-party. Uh, we're, we're just gonna go check it out. And then it goes. And he's just such a bro. And he's just like having the best time ever with the like, hanging out with the girls. And it looks so sad, <laughs> like just the whole experience. But it's a beautiful island. Uh, this isn't what I'm talking about, but same dude though. But yeah, like you can see how it's shot, right? Where there's just like this whole, it's very cinematic telling the whole story. Mm -hmm. And he's like, can't wait for tomorrow. It's going to be so good. We're, we're going to head over to the main island and it's going to be great in, in the morning. And then like it cuts. And like throughout it, you've been seeing little glimpses of him like walking the doors kind of janky and broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. You see, there's Teasing like some it. fucking noise. He's like, rah, rah, rah. And he's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. But like, it's all in between beautiful fantasy land and shit. And then all of a sudden, he just like he's like looking at his phone. He's like he's on a call, and he gets off. He's like he looks at his friends. Like, hey, hey, David. Hey, dude, they canceled the festival, man. <laughs> and then it just fucking takes a turn for the worse. And it reminded me of the movie Club Dread. <laughs> where it's like they all go to this fucking island, and all of a sudden it turns nice. into a horror movie. And he's just like, oh shit, are you kidding me? What do you mean? Wait, we all need to get off the the government's involved, and like. It just turns into fucking panic. Sheer panic. But he has his own building. But Are just, they like mobbing his building? See, no, because it's on a different like island. She's got to over this, there. This and it just gets so bad. But the fact that there was a, a vlog documenting this, I'm like, all right, we got it from the, the good side. Yeah, There's yeah. vlogs that I kept clicking around. There's people that are just like, my girlfriend is in that tent. They won't let me in the tent. And he's just like crying. Jesus. <laughs> My thing is this, like, and it, it, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction, right? If this were a movie, I would go see it. Seth Rogen uh, picked up the rights. Oh, did he fucking really yeah, already? He of course after. he did. They're going to make like Firefest a movie. It's going to be hilarious. He was doing a festival? Like he was doing like a drama or like a disaster idea? Yeah, it's based on this. Oh, it is? Yeah. No. Wow. This is yeah. a, that. I mean, this movie is going to sell. This is going to be so fucking funny to watch. Oh, my God. Because what you just described is the plot of a fucking ridiculous movie. It is so, and like you, you write it from the perspective of the guys that are like Lord stuck in that building, and like, and like it's chaos outside, and everyone just starts eating oh my each other. God, it's hilarious. so funny. Like and like so funny. keeping up with the Reddit going on that day was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Reading things that are just like talking about like, oh yeah, my girlfriend or boyfriend just got taken away, and I don't know where they are. My, hilarious. My, my my phone's dying. This is the last thing I <laughs> I'm gonna be able to say. Send help. <laughs> and then <laughs> and things like <laughs> there's a pack. <laughs> A feral dogs on a mountain looking at us. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're wolves. Oh my god! Did anyone die on this thing? So I, from my, I haven't heard about any deaths. So that's why it's funny. No, oh, yeah. I mean, if someone yeah, obviously if people why. got if people were severely hurt, we wouldn't be laughing. But it's the fact that all of these people went out there expecting one thing and just got such a fucking raw good deal. Soul. It yeah. so sucks, and it Man, sucks for all of them. That nobody up. fucking deserves that. That's such garbage that you could pay that much money and not get what you signed but up. But it's for. one of those things where, like, you taught you if you were to pitch me Burning Man on paper, I'd be like, no fucking way, that's gonna work. No way, that's not gonna wind up exactly like Firefest, where like. People didn't bring enough water. People start to, I mean, Burning Man's in the middle of a fucking desert. So, like, people could get severely hurt there. And I'm sure people, there are plenty of people that do get hurt or get dehydrated or just are doing too many drugs, whatever. But, like, you pitch me Burning Man, 
where like people have to drive out in the middle of nowhere and everyone has to bring all of their shit. And I'm like, everyone's dying. This is disaster, right? They all die. They're all fucking dying. <laughs> Spoilers. I don't everyone's believe dead. I don't believe in humanity, which I know is the it opposite just of what Bernie's Mad Max. Yeah, it's Mad Max. It's fucking beyond Thunderdome. Like someone's out of the Thunderdome. Let's get in there, Tina Turner. But like pitch that where you have to fly to a remote island and I'm like no way dude I'm not getting involved in this one step at a time and now to have the and this is the problem now to have my fears uh, totally come to life now I'm never going to a music show dude I'm not even going to watch music shows on YouTube guys do yourself a favor and just please YouTube Fire Festival just click around <laughs> because it's beautiful it is so beautiful and then it's not oh, God. and that is the best part it's my topic my topic is complicated but for a headline, you can just use penis size. Okay. I'm cleaning out the old spare bedroom at the house. Mm -hmm. Moving out. Colin's already gone. Taking everything apart. Doing everything. Moving right. Out. <laughs> I move some stuff in the spare bedroom. Do and you I ever find take the castle walls off that off the wall. Me and Kevin need to do that. Kevin and I need to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I want because I want I, what I want to do is take them down, cut those motherfuckers up, sign the things, sell them a kind of funny life. That's not a bad idea. Moving things around, moving things off shelves, doing all these different things, right? Find a little piece of paper. Very small. Like, it basically, like, think of a, a bookmark, right? Then someone tore off the bottom, and on that bottom wrote a topic for the Game Over Greggy <laughs> show. And I vaguely remember them doing this and handing it to me at some meet and greet, some signing we did years ago. Oh, I thought it was Colin that did it. That would have no, been so no, much no, 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 no. <laughs> to which I then held on to, and I'm like, I'll do this as a topic, and I put it down, and it got buried in other stuff, and I finally found it, looked at it. I was like, yes, I remember why I wanted to do this topic. I need to bring this piece of paper into the office. We need to do this as a Game Over Greggy show topic, which I feel on surface level will be brief, but stick with me. Now, of course, in true Greg fashion, I said that, put it down, didn't take a photo, and left it at the house. So right now, Kevin, you're going to put up in the edit the photo of the person's little question here and their little Twitter handle. Because the question was, a would you rather? Would you rather have a nipple-sized penis mm. or penis-sized nipples? Oh. <laughs> it's a, exactly exactly. I think that's an easy one. Exactly. What would you say? You gotta have nipple, you gotta have penis sized nipples, right? Hundred percent penis sized nipples, right? Tim, you can get creative if you have penis sized nipples. What do you do? Yeah, but you? they don't function like a penis. They're not gonna get hard. You can't have sex with two girls at the same time and pleasure them one of them with your mouth. Yeah. What? They're All you have is big old hangy big fucking. Yeah, here's the thing: if you touch them for enough, they get hard. You know what I mean? So he, 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 he brings up a good point. Good Greg, he brings yeah, up a good point. We're not so thinking like, about it. I don't understand it's why you're hung up on this, though, because, I mean, you, you have a normal penis. What? You have a normal penis at this point. If I had the penis-sized nipples? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I can do... Oh, Jesus. Yes, three. God. Even, even oh, you have a, you're like a triceratops. Yeah. Oh. You're like the head of a triceratops. Oh, shit. Not the body. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with that one. Okay. Right? Okay. Sure, I guess. Yeah, okay. I mean, because in the other way... No one wants a nipple-sized penis. There's, there's, there's no functionality yeah, to that at all. Yeah, that's just bad. The, yeah. the, the penis-sized nipples, my, my thought immediately goes to save up enough money, have them lanced off, and then you have just weird-shaped nipples. Oh, yeah. oh, you have oh, penis smart. You really can't, fine. I mean, you can, but it's not a good idea to try to enlarge the wiener. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want anybody yeah. poking just around down there. You've seen The Hangover too, right? I did. Yes. I don't remember. Nipple-sized penis in the beginning with the monkey. Oh, right. Where it's a... Uh, oh, fuck, yeah. There you go. Man. That's an example. I don't remember. I didn't. I maybe I did or <laughs> it didn't. It was see uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Ken Chong. Yeah. 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 That was hilarious. Which is a little yeah. bushel and little things shit. sticking up. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like whatever the option is, I got I got to go for the normal penis. I got to have that right. Yeah. So much. Of, <laughs> so much of my um, such a good statement. Yeah. You know. So so much of my. Um, <laughs> The Nick Scarpino uh, brand is based around the penis. Sure, of course. So if I don't have that to back up all the stupid shit that comes out of my mouth, yeah. what do I have? I mean, right. what's great? I mean, in that case, you get you get more penises. You have three penises. I don't not, know if they're, I'm penises. Th they're nipples that are penis yeah. size. They're not like functioning penises. They're like just a nipple this big, like areola. And Think of how big your dick is. Imagine see, that now just popping off. Uh, Kevin, none of Google this makes sense. giant nipple real quick. No, which no. I know this is the most Google Game Over Greggy show thing to do. Nipple. Yeah. Is to just tear apart the question. Yeah. But a, a, a dick sized nipple, yeah. like it's just the size of the dick. What are we hey, aiming like, like, Where are we measuring from? Are you really hard? Nipples? Are you not no, no, hard? No, no. It's, let's, let's just say it's like a fucking 
a nipple that's this big. Imagine. Think of like a, just, yeah, uh, there's just a hot dog hanging you got, down. You got your area that's nipples. like this big, right? So no balls. And then there's, no, no you got Jesus no balls. God, there's no balls. It's just, it's not yeah. just, well, it's, I don't think it's balls. It's not even the shape. I don't know it's because a I, nipple I, like that's the penis. shaped like a penis. I, I also include the scrot. So just a mushroom cap on top of your chest? I think yeah. it would just be like, I was giving it a shaft. That have, like, I was giving it the shaft too. It looks like the nipple on a baby bottle, basically, but like, but like if you're me, nine to 10 inches long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. then you could also go with the idea Get that the penis Friday. size nipple. How big are the penises? Because then you can go small. You know what I mean? Well, sure, but I'm thinking they're yours, your penis, oh, okay. your penis grafted on. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. That's it's going to give me some upper back problems, but they'll be fine with my. <laughs> so then, right. this is the thing. When this, when I read it, I was, and I think when I read it years ago as well too, I liked it as a topic because there's this goofy "what would you rather" thing. But then, underneath the surface of that. It was all a no-brainer question, right? Because we all don't want a nipple-sized penis. No, it's useless. Because just like everybody else, men are hung up on their penis size. Yeah, exactly. All of us are hung up on our penis size. All of my identity is based on my fellas. No, it isn't. Your 100%. hair. Oh, yeah, the hair. The hair's going. I got, all I got left is the <laughs> dick and a little bit of like my left lower back. The goo dick. See, but I feel like if you, if you had the nipple-sized dick and you had the normal-sized nipples, because it would be freaking weird if you had dick nipples, yeah. then you could convince the women that you're with, or men, whoever you're with, to be like, hey, there was a witch... She came. She gave me the would you she rather. She said, would you rather? And I was like, well, I had to go with the nipple dick because I didn't want dick. Well, I mean, n- nipple dick, you can't even have sex with people. Huh? Nipple dick, you're not even gonna be able to have you sex can have with sex. anybody. No. You can get creative. You can get creative. But Anyways. It's about the motion of the ocean. F- you have to fuck like G.I. Joe dolls or something small. Like you wouldn't be able to get Jesus any Christ. like girthy G. penetration out of that. Why would you say Barbie? <laughs> Kevin, why do you consistently try to limit me? Why do you hi- why do you have to put me in a box, Kevin? Why do you have to put me in a box? I'm just saying I know what you Why like. can't I be attracted to Duke and Flint just like everyone else, Kevin? Oh Lord. So Tim, my question yeah. again, because we're getting below the surf the, that was surface level. Okay. You, you can Let's throw go it out, deeper. Throw it out of your head now. The would you rather is done. Now we're cool. just talking about dick size. When were you okay with your dick size? Mm. Never. Yeah? I think that, but that's the thing. We talked about this on uh, Always we Open. Did, we did. Uh, you can check that out at. Stop trying to promote the other shit. It was a fucking good show. <laughs> Barb's better, uh, way better than, than this. Show. Wow. Um, but Damn. we were talking about like, if we could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Yeah. And like, I, like, feel like the easy answer is dick, because it's just like even. I am very confident in my dick and yeah. my dick abilities. Yeah. That is not to say that I am Super great. Yeah. I'm just good enough, which is how I like to live my life. Mm-hmm. Right. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. But you know, you um, can quarter skate mile better. at a time, all of it, and that's that's all that I do. Yeah, but I want the dicks that I admire. You know, I see porn, I see some dicks. I'm like, that's a good <laughs> dick. See, those dicks are too big. But some of them are. Some of them aren't. You just got to find your dick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. dick that you look at and you're like, I wish I had that dick. And even if it's just a visual <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah. Because ability wise, I'm fine. It doesn't need to be bigger. I get right. the job done. You're right. Yeah, done. yeah. 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 You're, exactly, you're getting the building exactly. made, mm-hmm. so to speak. So then, when when did you get over it? When did you were you always happy? Like were you when once you, I realized I can get the job done? Okay, I think that's okay, the thing. Okay. It's like once you realize you can do the thing, yeah. Then you're like, oh, mm-hmm. anything else is just extra credit, and I just need to be good enough. Sure. I sure. had I had I think you don't realize like for me I I I think I, I hit a point where I had a girl compliment it once. Oh, and I was like, what oh. what were the what were the words used? Because I know you remember them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she said. With a smile, it's big. Okay, perfect. That's all you and need. And I was here. like, "Now, mama, like, I'm like, I'm not <laughs> going to do what I normally do, which is try to dissect that and like ask her if that's what she really meant, or like, what do you mean by like it's big? Like how big? What's like, big to it's you? Big, you know? Yeah, exactly. Other- I'm just gonna take that at face value, pun intended. Um, what? Jesus, Jesus, and let that <laughs> let that just let that just sit with me forever. And this was a girl that I was incredibly attracted to. Yeah, and so I was like. I don't care if you're lying. You just gave me the biggest ego boost. I'm going to put that in the back of my brain, and that's all I'm going to ever think you about. You just me. walked out of the room. She's like, wait a second. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> uh, we we got another here. 45 seconds left. Um, you bring up a very important point there, though, which is being able to take compliments and not ask the wrong questions. Mm. Because I feel like, the, and to go back to what you're saying about, like, when was I confident enough in it? Yeah. It's that m- moment that you realize that you're not supposed to compare yourself to anybody else. Do not be like, don't ask any of the questions mm-hmm. that you want to ask. Like, how's this I, compare? How's this compare? Is am I smaller <laughs> have, than anyone I'm, else? Am I bigger yeah. than anyone else? Like, like that's it's human nature to ask those things sure. or want to ask those things. And I think that it's once you stop doing that is when you find the confidence in yourself, no matter 
how big or small sure. you are, and then you can kind of move forward. Then I think that those things can come up in conversation, but it cannot be when you're Stat- out you, to dinner. You the first time you've had sex with someone. Right? Dude, I mean, like, that's the thing is it's like, yeah, eventually when you're confident in your relationship yeah. and your ability, that's like, then you, yeah, if you wanted to talk about other people's dicks, you could, but like, Hey, that's on you. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, uh, I think and for any wives out there or any girlfriends out there, I think the answer to that question of like, have you seen bigger? Just do him a favor and be like, no, no, no. Well, don't no. lie to him. Don't face. lie to his fucking face. <laughs> do not You've lie. You've never there watched is porn. Nothing gained. No, I'm not porn. I mean, like, have you ever seen one if in, person. in person? You had sex with a guy that's you ever seen one dick, right around here? Just do the guy a favor and be like, and not that I recall. Just pull a, like a sentence. Not here. that I recall. <laughs> pull a sentence here. You don't have to lie to him. Just be like, there's been so uh, many dicks. If, if, if someone, recall, if someone asks seen. you the first date, pull back away from your microphone, at, just, whisper your representative. I plead the fifth. Uh, no yeah. comment. Yeah. Uh, no comment. Or, or uh, my lawyer like, is instructing me not to <laughs> invoke my fifth amendment right. Or, or you could just, you could pull the old, you know, I have really bad spatial relations. I'm not sure how big, what, you, well, you know, know, back growing up, again. I had a lazy eye. So yeah, I had no yeah. depth perception. Depth perception <laughs> all off. Everything was half as big as it felt. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, but, but obviously with sex, like, you know, every, every guy thinks about that, right? This is a very fascinating question. Every yeah. guy, at some point you've wondered like how you, physically stack up against everyone else um, and then you wonder how that relates to how good or bad you are in bed but you know there's like there's so much more to sex than just sure. that size right yeah. especially so like, like I know learning what your person mouth likes. is just as shitty as my dick is so in my, my arms and my body and everything else so, I spent hey. a considerable amount of time practicing with my mouth when I was in high school because I refused to how'd you sex practice on females oh okay females. humans yeah. uh, humans <laughs> Let's hope it's humans. <laughs> My G.I. Joe collection. I <laughs> thought you had some kind of program. There might have been a border collie in there somewhere. Just Matt, Matt Scarpino comes home. And you're <laughs> He's out like, a perfect what are you doing with that kind of one? No, but yeah, but all kidding aside, obviously, like, you know, you're when you get with a partner for a long time, you'll learn what she likes, he or she likes, and that's that's more important than, sure. than size, for sure. That's that's my safety. Chris, were you always confident in your dick size? Because you're a strapping young gentleman here. Thank you. You're a good looking dude overall. You got that, go- you got that, that good dick. That good dick. <laughs> you got that good dick? Well, I can say. Were you expecting this when you came on the show? <laughs> yeah, he probably. Knows. <laughs> he knows yeah, I've watched the show. I know what I was getting into. Yeah. Um, I guess so. I mean, yeah? to be completely honest, I've never really thought about it because yeah. I was just too busy doing shit, but um, my girlfriend doesn't complain. <laughs> too busy bagging. <laughs> I'm too busy getting too the busy. job but done. The best way I can say it is um, I've never met Jen, obviously, because yeah. she's not here, but she has an, um, her social media, the way my girlfriend comments on mine, yeah. is the way she, as Jen comments on yours. How she has like that uh, ferocious appetite yeah. for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, High five. That's why. Put, that a, ring on, put a ring on it. Confirmed. Yeah, it says a lot about well, I don't you. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All your stories are like, D, like, yeah, like, I don't want to yeah, go home, like, go do whatever nah, you got to okay. do. Do what you want to do. No, it's interesting because I think about, you know, you know, so many people listen to our show that are like, and they they live through our experiences vicariously, all these different things. And I remember growing up, that was just those questions. It was just like, yeah. well, I don't know. Is this normal? Am I normal? Am I not normal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you don't have that conversation. You don't want to be looking around in the shower. And then especially when you're like talking about like, you know, junior high into high school, everyone's on a different train. Just, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, you don't want that shit. Yeah, when I was in high school, um, obviously I was in marching band, so we very obviously. rarely, rarely had an occasion to see each other a naked or b in the showers with each other. We weren't jocks any stretch of the imagination, yeah. <laughs> except for one time we stayed. We did an overnight where we drove up to Northern California and did like an overnight band competition where we all stayed in. Um, one hotel room. A gym. Oh. No, it was like literally everyone in the band, drill team, all that stuff. One big gym. Super fun. It was like, it was like you know. John Sleepover. But like, it was only a weekend trip, so most people didn't bother showering because they were too like too embarrassed to shower in front of everyone. Because we tell me you were, you were just like. I was like, I don't give a fuck, right? Because I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm pretty confident in myself. And all my friends, there's all my friends. And so I was like, guys, we got to be adult about this. Like, guys do this. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Right? Wait, what? Like, I love this so goddamn No, we all, like, we all were like, we need to be mature about this. Like, we need to shower. Because I, I was like, I don't want to be around stinky people. I'm like, I'm going to shower. And all me and all my friends were like, fine. We'll just agree to be like... We're just gonna we're gonna do this. Not a big deal. Don't don't shoot as a big deal. You didn't you didn't present it, it to him as let's measure drumsticks. No, <laughs> no, I did not. Because okay. uh, clearly my baton was supposed to be there. Oh, okay. um, so it was totally fine, right? God. And we were everyone was maintaining <laughs> eye contact. No one was no <laughs> no one was like <laughs> don't make it weird, guys. No one was making it weird until we have my one. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give him a shout out. Right? I'm not gonna call him. Out. It wasn't Stu. It was not Stu. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Stu was actually a part of this, but one, one of my he other friends, band, was he? Um, 
came into the shower. He was. And it was the very first time I remember thinking, I was like, I'm looking this guy in the eyes and I can still see his dick. <laughs> it's so big. This fucking sweat hog came into the bathroom, ready to be hosed off. And I was like, I said, I can't do this anymore. And literally, I like, I like watched out and I was like, I, did, I had full confidence in myself until I saw my friend's penis. And then I was like, that is fucking huge. Straight that up meat cannon. Go. Just <laughs> hanging there. Just boom. It was just, it was, I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, your dad did you a fucking favor. You should go shake his hand. Shake his hand. Which one? My God. Yeah. Nick. That was the one only time I showered with a group of men. That, <laughs> that is such a funny story. But my favorite thing about it is just you, the, your confidence in it. I'm just like, let's be adult about this. Like, we're friends. Everybody get naked Imagine again in the shower. I'm doing that with this group of friends now. <laughs> we would all get naked together. But I, mean, I just, I don't know that there's necessarily <laughs> that like, let's just be adult about this. I'm not going to be adult about it at all. <laughs> not to mention, I would not trust you as far as I can fucking throw this table. That Like, if we were like, let's all be adults in there, you'd immediately be trying to put your fucking thumb up Kevin's asshole in the <laughs> fucking shower. Oh, my God. Don't oh my god, Kevin. Yeah, it would be Kevin, like, never shower with Nick. Do oh, me a favor. No, like adults would take turns. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. There all right, go. I'll go in there next. All right, Let's cool. be adults about this. All right, we're all yeah, getting in together. Like, Let's was, save the water. It was a high school gym. It was like one of those, like, you know, there was just spigots everywhere. So we're like, we're just going to go and take a shower. We didn't really think that much about it. It wasn't like a plotted out thing. We weren't like, it wasn't a bracket sounds for who like was going to take a shower. It sounds like you you guys were like outside and you had a stick and you drew the shower stall. You're like, all right, now you go here and I'm going to go here. I swear to God. Eye I don't, contact. I don't know why or how it came up. No pun intended on that. I don't know why or how this this happened, but I do remember distinctly being encouraged to like go shower. I mean, you're talking also pubescent, like puberty stricken boys. Sure. Like, we're all stinky and disgusting, and we're about to get on the bus with girls that we want to make out with. So we're like, okay, we got it. We got it. We got to be clean. We're going to have to see some dicks to be able to touch some things that we don't really know what they are. Listen, if I have to crawl through a sea of wet dick to get to one boob touch, I would have done that when I was 16. And that's exactly what I did. Oh, Lord. It was like Shawshank Redemption. What? Except instead of crawling through a mile of shit, it was just dicks. And to do brain. It was my best friend So many dicks <laughs> to get to touch that boob. But he came out the other side clean. And the waters are receded. Yeah. There you go. You're all welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Great visual. Stories from band. Thank you. Yeah. It's one time at there band camp. <laughs> It's this has been the Game Over Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each bringing a random topic of the conversation. I'd shower with you any fucking day. It's not, I know any you fucking I day. Fucking know you but the problem that. is that I wouldn't be able to take my eyes off it, I bet. You want to see it? Sure. I'll no. see you later. No. <laughs> if you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can toss us a few bucks and get every episode early along with a bunch of exclusive goodies, perks, and tears. If you have no bucks to toss, no big deal, head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where we put the entire show up topic by topic, day by day until it goes up as one big video the following Friday and one big MP3 the following Friday. What, you still think about this guy's like dick? I'm like, do I, is, there, is there even a line left across on this show? No, not at all. The line left across is a story I'm about to tell that we may or may not have to cut where when oh, we were like 16, my. it was my brother's, all of his friends, he's two years younger than me. They're a bunch of 14 year old boys. They're all having a sleepover out in the, the, uh, the living room. There was maybe like eight of them. I decided it'd be a funny idea. There we go. I had the strobe light. Oh, shit. I was like, I remember this. They're all sleeping. I'm going to come out with the strobe light with blast some fucking music. I'm going to be butt ass naked in front of the strobe light, <laughs> just shaking my dick up and down. Techno dance party. Yeah, and of course I did it. It's, and it's, they all wake it's, up, it's, and I'll never forget the screams. <laughs> and I'll never forget them explaining it the next day to other people. They'll be like, I just saw from the strobe light, it was every second or two, the <laughs> shadow of a dick on the wall. <laughs> you see, like, I tried looking away, and it was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh God! Lord. Flopping penises will never not be it funny. It's so funny. You know what I mean? I do. I mean, I do at least once a month. I'll give my wife the floppy. Oh yeah. I'm just like, look, how you doing? Give her the goat. Just give her a little. Yeah, give her a little like. Give the her the twirl. helicopter. She, I, I I imagine knowing your wife, the reaction would be something to this. <laughs> <laughs> Nine out of ten times it is. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get her to smile, yeah. and that's how I know I'm like. See, the problem is when you smile. It makes it makes the other nine times totally worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. Yeah, you do the same shit, Chris. Yes, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Everybody, check out Crush Your Goals podcast. 
Yes. I'm assuming my episode is up or around, going up around this episode. Probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, it's so, it's yeah. content. That's content scheduling. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for supporting us. Thank you for Did you have me. fun? I did. All right, good. How, was the barbecue good? Barbecue was good. All right, good. It was very okay. good. Cool. I hope you guys Kevin enjoyed me uh, stumbling over myself. No, you know. were great. You've been awesome. Oh, I'm, I don't know about that. You guys are just being nice. No, we're not. No, trust me. We've had some bad people on here. Well, just, Trevor Starkey just a, came on just once. Step above. Just, oh. God damn it, Trevor Starkey. Nah, we Trevor love Trevor. Starkey was great. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you for Are having you coming me. to Kind of Funny Live 3? Possibly. All right, you should. Uh, June right. 3rd. We'll kind see. Kind of Funny slash KFL3. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Thanks for watching this episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. Click here to subscribe. Click here to support us on Patreon. Click here to see other episodes. Click here to go into a portal to take you to Kind of Funny Games. I'm Greg. Kind of, I kind of made all this happen. But I mean, not in like a conceited way. I'm just saying if I didn't want to do the Oreo show ever, then it would have never happened. I hope Kevin isn't mad at me. You mad at me, Kevin?